This is Monty in the Morning, the show Phoenix Magazine readers voted number one talk radio show in Arizona. Number one during your morning commute. Number one whenever news breaks during your day. And number one whenever and wherever you want to talk sports. Now it's time for Monty in the Morning. Hey, yo, man. How the heck are you? It is Friday, August 26, 2022. One week from now, I will not be here. I will be headed for the island nation of awesomeness. Yeah. Known as Hawaii. Hawaii. So uh, we'll be off next Friday for travel. Back next Monday from Kona. Yes, we will be doing shows in Hawaii when we feel like it. On Jenna Marbles' channel. Yeah, new anyway, videos uh, every you day. Know, uh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. But we will certainly be giving you a trip or two to see BYU and Notre Dame in the Shamrock Series in Las Vegas, October 7th and 8th. You get two nights at the Palms Resort Hotel and Casino. You get two tickets to that game and a $250 gas card to get you there. Thanks to our good friends at Barbecue Pit Stop. Super stoked to be at Barbecue Pit Stop on September 17th in Lehigh. We are going to have Papa Murphy's Pizza. Let's go. Yes, friends. Let's Welcome go. Papa Murphy's Hell to, yeah. the, to the program. Hell yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. You know that we talk about take and bake Papa Murphy's on smokers all the time. So we thought that we would hook you guys up with some Papa Murphy's Pizza uh, September 17th at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh. We're going to be watching the BYU and Oregon game. Uh, at halftime of that game, we are going to pull a uh, winner's name from the box. And all you have to do is go to any of Barbecue Pit Stop's five Utah locations. Logan, Layton, Lehigh, St. George, and the scenic, beautiful, picturesque Murray uh, all of those locations have a box on the counter with our fine picture on it. Yes. All you have to do is walk in, put a slip in the box, drop it in, and then we'll pull one winner on September 17th at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh. And by the way, if you're <clears throat> unsure of how to smoke pizzas, might want to show up to the event on September 17th. I am super excited because we love Papa Murphy's. It's yes. It's something I know we talk about it a lot on this show. In fact, tonight we'll be talking about it because we're probably going to smoke Papa Murphy's yes, pizza sir. tonight. Uh, it's going to be amazing. So we'll have that there for you. We'll have some wings there for you. And, of course, we'll have great football between BYU and Utah. Thanks to our good friends um, at Barbecue Pit Stop. All right. Coming up here in 30 minutes, Coog Connect. Jake Brandon will join us, uh, the director at Coog Connect. Um, I think pretty much... Without even question, Coog Connect is the number one NIL collective at BYU, and they've seen significant success. They have seen consistent wins in NIL, and one of the things we've talked about uh, here on the show is why NIL is so darn dysfunctional in college football. So Jake Brandon's going to join us coming up here in about 28 minutes uh, from Coog Connect to talk about that. Uh, while you wait, of course, feel free to get to CoogConnect.com and check them out. Uh, the wild, wild west of of NIL. I think it's been shocking, surprising, disappointing. And there have been very few like Coog Connect who have succeeded at their level. So it's going to be an interesting conversation. What separates BYU and people like Coog Connect from Utah and the University of Utah and the lack of collectives and the lack of success at Utah. We'll ask Jake Brandon from Coog Connect about that coming up at the top of the hour. All right, let's get into the Pac-12. This daily conversation about can the Pac-12 survive, I actually think it's very pertinent. I think it's very relevant because we've seen a lot of conversations circulating about what's going on in college football expansion. And one of the big questions we get asked a lot, if you follow the show, if you follow us on YouTube, uh, subscribe to the show. Give us a thumbs up. It helps us grow. But one of the things we see a lot is, why has the Big 12 not invited new members to the conference? And the second biggest question we get is, can the Pac-12 survive? So, Jake, again, I ask you on Friday, August 26th, 
can the Pac-12 survive? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think that the Pac-12 is just in one of these situations where it is unfortunately on the chopping block. And I think we've seen this, um, you know, we've seen this before in, in college athletics. And so, no, I, I don't think that, um, you know, in the long term, the Pac-12 survives. I, I And I think that that's mostly due to what the Big Ten is doing. But I think the Big 12 is in a really interesting position here because they they have the unique opportunity of pretty much being set up already, and they don't have to force anything. And I think that's a beautiful position to be in. Now, with that position comes the fact that you are not the Big 10, you are not the SEC, and I you know, honestly don't even think you're trying to compete with those two. I, I think if you're the Big 12, what you're trying to do is you're trying to be the best at being the the second tier conference in college football, if you will, where, you know, you have the Big Ten and the SEC who are clearly, you know, the top class in college football. Those are the two best conferences. And then I think if you're the Big 12, you're trying to be the best of what's left. And I think that is the role they're going to play. And so it's really interesting to sort of watch this unfold when you're getting news. Well, I think that was last week or maybe the week before about this Big Ten, you know, $7 billion TV rights deal and all the expansion that's happening. The Big 12 is just sitting here saying, okay, great. Let's let them do their thing. Go ahead, take Oregon, take Washington, like take whatever you want. And then we're just going to pick up the rest of what's left to kind of complete what we already have. And, and I think, you know, this dynamic of, you know, the Big 12 saying, hey, we want this particular school, but not that particular school. I think that really is 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 what's interesting about their choices and how they go about it. Because to me, like as an example, like San Diego State is a no-brainer, as we've talked about on the show, in my opinion and in our opinion. But the Big 12 has shown um, some hesitancy, some like, hey, like, yeah, we're not necessarily interested in having San Diego State. We'd be obviously real interested with, you know, a USC, let's say, but that's not a possibility anymore. So it's just going to be interesting to see <clears throat> how all this works out. Without, without a doubt, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, please don't die. That yeah, would be I was dying. Yeah, it was show. not good. I actually think that when you look at the Pac-12, I do think there is one model that allows them to survive. And I think the tipping point is San Diego State. I think you're exactly right. I think San Diego State is a battleground institution at this point. And if you're the Pac-12, I think the only way to survive is to have Southern California, to have something south of Berkeley. But all of that is reliant on the Big Ten not decimating your membership. If the Big Ten swoops in and they take Oregon, Washington, Cal, and Stanford, it's over. There is no survival. You can add San Diego State. That doesn't necessarily mean you're adding um, TV viewership, and really that's what matters most. I think the Big Ten is dominating the Pac-12 right now. And frankly, when we talk about, hey, can the can the Pac-12 survive, I think the, the bigger question is, is the Big 12 or the Pac-12 more of a viable option um, for people who are in the Big Big 12 and the Pac-12 right now. If you yeah. look at the Big 12 versus the Pac-12, if you are, I don't know, Oregon State, if you're Utah, look at Utah. Is Utah better off in the Big 12 or the Pac-12? I don't think there's any doubt they're better off in the Big 12. If I look at San Diego State, am I better off joining the Big 12 or the Pac-12? I don't think there's any question you're better off joining the Big 12. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. And the thing that I really struggle with is the lucid thought process of, you know, for instance, Utah fans. I know that Ute fans get really upset when we say, hey, the Pac-12 is dead. I don't actually believe, I guess that's the right way to say it. I don't believe that there's a path to survival Mainly because I think Oregon's going to pull the ripcord as soon as they can. Yeah, it feels like that. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah, I think, it feels I, like that. I think that's what we're waiting for. We are simply going through the process with the Oregon Ducks joining the Big Ten, in my opinion. And if that happens, I think Washington's going with them. And I think the big thing is, if you're UCLA and USC, what's the pushback that you've gotten from your membership on joining the Big Ten? Well, hey, the travel on the student athlete is going to be crippling. Well, not if you've got Oregon and Washington and Cal and Stanford joining with you yeah. and you have a Western Conference of the Big Ten. If that indeed happens, it's a no-brainer that Washington and Oregon, Stanford and Cal join with USC and UCLA. 
You own the West Coast. And furthermore, that gives you, you know, essentially three different time zones. Yeah. That gives you the East Coast with Rutgers. Obviously, you get the central time zone throughout the the, the Big Ten, and now you've got the, the Pacific time zone. Yep. The only one you don't have, and I don't know that you really care to have it, is the mountain time zone because I don't see the Big Ten adding Utah. I don't see them adding Colorado. I don't see them adding Air Force. I, I just don't see that happening. So if we're looking at Colorado State, is that really an option for the Big Ten? It doesn't seem that way because, frankly, they don't need it. Well, and that's the tough part. It, it's not one of these things where it's like there's a criteria for getting into the Big Ten. It, it, it's much more of a haves and have-nots, you know, and, and that's why I've been saying for the past, I don't know, a couple of weeks that Utah is just in such a precarious situation here because, yeah, I mean, they, I, I, I would think that they have an invite to the Big 12 or if they don't have one, one's coming soon. Yeah, you would certainly think right? so, like right? You would, you would think so, but but I just I, I, I sit here and I wonder if you're Utah, hey, like we're watching Oregon and these premier brands pretty much be a done deal to the Big 10 at this point. Like I think everyone can agree – hey, that's happening, it's just a matter of time until that's finalized, and really, what are we going to do about it? What, what, What is it, like, what is our next play? And I think the, the, the fact that BYU is already in the Big 12 kind of locks Utah into the Big 12. If BYU was staying independent... Does, do you really think so? Yeah, well, because I think that if you're Utah, you need something to stay relevant. You need something to 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 keep lighting that fire. Like, you've been building over the last several seasons in the Pac-12, and you've gotten to a place where now you're a Rose Bowl team, and you're doing a lot of big things, but now that's going to change, you know, because of what's happening to the Pac-12. And so... If we, if we fast forward and we project forward based on what we know, if the Pac-12 dissolves, let's say, and you get you get Utah and San Diego State going to the Big 12 and a right. handful of other teams, if you're Utah, like that's your your last best option. But, that's you know, the problem. I, I go back to what we talked about earlier in this week. I think Utah has a brand problem. Yeah, I think when I don't I don't think you're wrong. Yeah, that Utah needs BYU and they need that game and that affiliation. It's just the the reason that you're you're correct on that is it's perception versus reality. In my mind, when I think branding and I think money, BYU is absolutely in the advantage in the driver's seat in the state of Utah. And and again, I know this is going to be upsetting to Ute fans. BYU is the football brand in this state. But look at Washington. Washington hasn't done any winning recently. But Washington's like, it almost feels like they're auto bid into the Big because Ten. Because Washington's in Seattle. And I think that Washington gives you a huge market. And I think market matters. And I think AAU matters. And I think BTAA matters. And I think all this money stuff attached to the Big Ten, that absolutely matters. Yeah. The size of the market matters. I was talking to Josh Loverin on Twitter yesterday, and he was talking about how Pullman, Washington, actually is a top five TV market in the in the Pac-12. That's absolutely correct. But the problem is, if I ask anybody in Chicago, Columbus, Detroit, hey, where is Pullman, Washington? Bro, what are you talking about, man? They're like, who cares? They're not going to say I don't know. They're going to say who cares. Yeah. So when you talk about, hey, does Washington State have a brand? It doesn't. Does Washington State have TV viewership? It does. I believe their average viewership is 1.4 million. That's not nothing. But the issue is perception of Pullman, Washington, is it's where the conference, specifically USC on Friday nights, goes to die yeah. in their pursuit of national championships. Yeah. So I think you have a perception issue at Utah. And I think very clearly... And again, this is just my opinion. Nobody has said this very clearly. I think you're right. I think most of college football believes that, that Utah is a Big 12 program. I got news for you. Utah would thrive in the Big 10. Yeah. I think Utah can compete with any Big 10 school. They showed you without their starting quarterback that they were a snap away from beating Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. Yeah. So we can sit here and we can, we can talk about, well, this play and that play perception is reality. And when we're talking about billions of dollars in college football, Utah has no control of that. Yeah. And when you look at San Diego State, San Diego State's value today will never be higher than it, it is right now. It will never exceed what it is now. When you have the stadium situation, Snapdragon Stadium. Yeah. The problem is 
San Diego State underperforms their TV markets, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. Does that change if you put San Diego State in the Big 12? Do they become a bigger, better TV property? Well, of course they do. Yeah. If you put San Diego State up against Oklahoma State, that game's getting more than a million views. That game is going to perform, you know, next to what could be there, which is something else that I think a lot of people are talking about when you look at TV numbers. Hey, if I put San Diego State in that slot instead of Baylor, is that is San Diego State going to outperform Baylor, Oklahoma State? It's not. It's not. It's never going to, in all likelihood. But my point is, if I put San Diego State in Utah in a in a game on national TV, is it going to outperform somebody else that would be there? Is it going to outperform Oregon State? Yeah, hell yeah, it is. Absolutely, it yeah. is. Is it going to outperform Washington State? I would think so. Because San Diego State, that fan base is going to grow. Their enrollment is going to grow. Eyes on their TV games are going to grow simply because they're in a, a major P5 conference, which they are not right now. Nobody cares, frankly speaking, about San Diego State and Boise State right now. That's not a game of consequence. Yeah. That is not a game of consequence outside of Boise. Boise in that blue turf. Or a very small certain area of San Diego. But now, if you put San Diego State into bigger matchups, that begins to grow their TV numbers. That gives you Southern California. If you say to an advertiser, hey, we have San Diego in the conference. Do you think they're like, well, let me go look up what San Diego State did 13 years ago against uh, Little Jimmy's Cooking Academy. Uh, well, they <laughs> only got 300,000 views. We're not going to be able to buy that. No, they're going to say, oh, it's Southern California. Oh, and wow, you're you're playing Oklahoma State. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, this is a big game. Well, hey, we have San Diego State playing for the Big 12 championship. You know. They're not going to say, well, you know, I remember back when they played Poughkeepsie, uh, you know, Technical College. <laughs> They're not doing that. Yeah. They're saying, hey, that's Southern California. That's San Diego. I want that market. I want to sell, I want to sell my, you know, butthole widget in San Diego. Let me go in, let me go and do that deal for the for the San Diego State or for the Big 12 or yeah. that's how they're gonna look at well, it. Well, and San Diego State's clearly prepared. I mean, you know, as a as an institution, they're clearly prepared to be to be added, you know, and 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 you have to give yeah. them credit for that. And I and you know, obviously. You know they're not a they're not an Oregon or a Washington or any of these huge schools, but I I think that they provide value. But again, like this concept around Utah, I just think it's fascinating. Like San Diego State very clearly is a is a you know I'm not gonna say a fringe you know Big Twelve ad, but you know there there's conversation whether they should get in or shouldn't get in. Like that's right. where they are right now, and I and I think I it, it just it. it I don't know what the right word to use is about Utah, but it's just upsetting that we have to have a conversation around, hey, should Utah really be in the Big 12 or are they a Big 10 team? And Because I have no doubt on the field, they're a Big 10 team. They're, it's just not in question that they are a Big 10 team on the football field. And it's just really sad that because the branding and marketing stuff isn't Big 10 caliber, you're, you're getting beat by Washington, a program that, that you've outperformed, and I just it, it it it's it just shouldn't be the case. Like it would be awesome to get Utah and SC in a Big Ten matchup, like like though that type of thing would be great. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I don't. I think that would be great. Uh, talking Big Twelve expansion. Thanks to our friends at Wayman Brothers Construction. 801-654-1028. 1028 for the best contractor in Utah and. I can only tell you that Wayman Brothers Construction has done work in my house. If you need a basement, if you need a bathroom, a kitchen, if you're looking for a remodel, if you're looking for an addition, maybe you're looking to add a rental unit. We're going to talk about rents later in, in the show. The average rent in this country is 1800 bucks. Maybe you're looking to buy a, uh, you know, or, or add an ADU so you can get rental property. Wayman Brothers Construction will do that. And the thing that I want to tell you about Wayman Brothers Construction that matters so much is their finished product is really good. They're on time. They're there all the time. The greatest thing about Wayman Brothers, and the best part when you are doing a project at home or you're renovating your house, is when the guys are actually there working. The worst part of it is when there's just a bunch of dust on the floor. They've ripped everything apart and nobody shows up. You can't get them on the phone. They won't text you back. And then three weeks from next Tuesday, they show up and you're not even home. And you didn't even know they were coming. 
That's the worst. At Wayman Brothers, you don't have to worry about that because uh, it, when you when you deal with Wayman Brothers, it's a family business. So Alma Wayman is going to text you back. Alma Wayman's going to call you back or you're going to call the office and you're going to talk to Autumn and she's going to be like, oh, hey, how are you? Yeah, here's, we're doing this or we're doing that. Like they're, you know, the guy that I've always dealt with, the guy who built my deck, Josh at Wayman Brothers Construction, fantastic guy, can talk to you about exactly why they're doing this or what they're doing takes the time to explain the process, how it works, like... And your options. And that, you're on time. Yeah. And you have options. Yeah. Hey, do you want Trex versus Wood? Like, they built my deck out back, I told you yesterday. Wayman Brothers Construction built my deck, and um, I'm just telling you, if you're in the state of Utah and you need a project at home, if you're thinking about building a deck, Wayman Brothers does a great job on bathrooms, decks, basements, kitchens. Call them today, 801 654 1028. Tell them you heard about it on the Monty Show. 801 654 1028 for Wayman Brothers Construction. Coming up here in 10 minutes, Jake Brandon from Coog Connect uh, is going to join us. We're going to talk about NIL and college basketball and football and how all of this works because I really feel like NIL has been so dysfunctional. And we, I think it's been really dysfunctional at Utah. And I think at BYU, they've seen. Pretty incredible success. And I don't mean the built bar deal, and that is absolutely significant. But it's guys like Coog Connect that have had really big success. Like they just released a Clark Barrington shirt that is sold and it's sold really well. Those are the things that we need to understand. And why do collectives like Coog Connect, like <clears throat> one of the things we did is we were researching Coog Connect, you can subscribe to their their website, $10 a month. Most of that money goes right back to the player and they create content. They do exclusive interviews. They create t-shirts. Why are they able to do that? But Utah can't do anything mm -hmm. or the perception is that Utah can't do anything to me. That's the most frustrating thing. Yeah. I just, I want to understand why BYU has been so much more successful at NIL than Utah has. So we'll talk to Jake Brandon coming up in about 10 minutes. Stick around for that. But uh, let's get your comments in here on San Diego State, the Big 12, the Pac-12. Our main theme this morning to start the show, and yes, I see all of your Donovan Mitchell comments. We'll get to Donovan Mitchell coming up at 7.30. Stick around for that. But one of the bigger <laughs> questions is, what should San Diego State do? Should San Diego State join the Big 12? Should they join the Pac-12? Should they do nothing? It's a big question with San Diego State. I'm a huge believer in the Aztecs. I think they bring a lot to the table. If I'm the San Diego State Aztecs, I'm just sitting here and waiting and watching because they're going to be a battleground property. They are going to be the only school left in Southern California for one of these conferences to, to pick up. Yeah. And I think it's going to be the Big 12. That's just my opinion. <clears throat> It's that Friday, it's that My Friday grind, wants you bro. To know it's it's Friday. that Friday grind. Absolutely. All right, let's get your comments in here. Cody Strickland, good morning to you. First one in, he says, morning, boys. Lost three more pounds, down a total of 13 pounds. Atta boy. Since we started, casuals getting cut. Yeah, boy. By the way, you can still join the group. It's a great group of guys. We all, like, comment. And it's just fitness accountability. We're talking about, hey, I worked out here today. We did this today. Uh, hey, I ran here. A lot of people put their screen grabs or their fitness trackers. I put my Apple Watch in there every day. Like yesterday, I, I put a picture of Jake doing shoulder presses in there yeah. on a video. Like, it's just a really good exchange of ideas. And Cody runs like a freak, which, yeah. Hey, I, you're, you're a beast, bro. I mean, I, you I think, really are. Dude, Cody. that picture you put up the other day, like 10 miles and like, you know, I think 12,000 elevate. Like, I, dude, I, you're just a machine, bro. Yep. I, yeah. I agree. Steve Hambone says, What's up? Happy Friday. Kurt Myers, good morning to you. Um, Colton Bitten, good morning to you. He says, Would you rather have Pat Bev alongside Donovan Mitchell or THT? We can talk about that at 7 30. Can I Johnson says, Top of the morning, fellas. College football's coming. Kicks off this weekend. Yeah. Then next Saturday. Week zero. Next Saturday, we get Utah kicking the crap out of the Gators. It's going to be amazing. If I said to you, if I said to you, hey, week one, Utah is going on the road to play the SEC, win or lose. You don't know the program. I would say win. I think Utah's that team you don't want to schedule. Yeah. I would not want. I think Kyle Whittingham flies so far under the radar. 
so far under the radar. Yeah. I think people don't understand just how good, just how good the Utah football program is. Yeah. I think people more know BYU because BYU's on ESPN. BYU's made a lot of noise the last couple of years. You know, Zach Wilson's mom. Like, I mean, they have all of this notoriety. <laughs> Zach, see that? That's a... Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Lisa. No, no, no. <laughs> You guys are idiots. We are. We're idiots, Lisa. We get it. By the way, she said no again to coming on the show. No, no, no. I continue to ask, and she just won't. She won't do it. She won't do it. Uh, Teddy Wayman, what's up? Good to see you. Good morning to all you casuals. Wayman Brothers Construction. There you go. See, Teddy. Teddy. That's part of the team. Let's go. Uh, Brandon James says, good morning. Uh, Let's see. Justin Salas says, good morning, fellas. Up early to take a boy to school. Should just go back to sleep instead. I'm up listening to the show. You should not go back to sleep. Don't go back to sleep. There's no reason to go back to sleep. Uh, let's see. Kurt Byers says, uh, former Big 12 commissioner thinks the Pac-12 needs San Diego State. I think I think the Pac-12 needs San Diego State to even have any chance. Dude, I, the, the Pac-12, let's not beat around the bush. The, the Pac-12, and really, I'm going to stop referring to it as the Pac-12, and I'm just going to say the Pac needs a lifeline. They need this next thing, and I don't believe that San Diego State. I think San Diego State would be a nice ad but it's not enough. You need like, like you know how the Big Ten has a bunch of momentum right now because they're adding all these teams. You need to get that vibe back into the pack. Like it needs to be, hey, we're doing this great thing. You know, San Diego State's a part of it, and exactly right. And like, exactly like we right. have like some semblance of a heartbeat. But it just right now, it just feels like, yeah, all right. Oh, today, okay. So today's the twenty sixth. Yeah, so give us about two weeks. Oregon and all the premier brands are going to leave the conference, and then we're going to order all our boxes to pack up our offices. So we'll be out of here in about a month. Like, that's what it feels like right now. And 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 I don't know what you do to stop it, mainly because I think the the leadership in the in, in the pack and, you know, guys like Dave Hickey at Arizona and their arrogance is just incredible, you know? Yep. And, and I understand, you know, we got some comments on that conversation from yesterday that, like, what else is Dave going to say? And Dave's got to say that. And, yes, on I some totally level. I totally disagree with Well, that. like, on some level, he's got to be positive. I get that. But right, to you say gotta that. Right, you got to be positive, but—, but- Come to say on. that you're that the Pac-12 is one of the greatest conferences there's ever been, and like we're the where's conference that video? Wait, 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 like, come on, wait, dude. wait, wait. We gotta play the video. Come on, we gotta play. Here's here's Dave Hickey. This is the problem with the Pac-12. Dave Hickey does have to be positive and say good things, but does he have to go this far? But I'm very proud of the position that the University of Arizona is in. We are strong. We're solid. Um, this institution will be in the right place. Um, I'm also very confident in the Pac-12 uh, with its current membership of 10 now. But again, we still have two years before those two other institutions leave. But uh, we've got to be planning and orchestrating and be ready to pivot and do the right things. But I'm very confident in how the Pac-12 looks and how this conference looks going forward. We're an anchor in the West. We're one of the greatest conferences that there's ever been. We have so much tradition and history here connected to the Rose Bowl. Um, there's a lot of value in that, and we're proud as Arizona to be part of that. <laughs> Dude, Bro, seriously. what are you... Stop. Serious. Just... I, again, I know drugs are unregulated in Tucson, but what are you smoking, bro? Dude. No, you are not one of the greatest conferences of all time. <laughs> Come no, on, you're dude. Not. Stop Come it. Come on, man. Stop. And again, I get it. You have to say positive things. Oh, you Arizona. No, it's a dry heat here in Tucson. Don't lie to me. We get it, right? We get it. You're not one of the greatest conferences of all time. And again, I will say <laughs> the Pac-12 is one of the great failures in the history of business of sport and in college football history. The Pac-12 and that whole initiative is one of the greatest failures in the history of college athletics because of what it should have been Thanks. it should have been amazing now the very fact that you pay millions of dollars to have a basement office in san in san francisco <laughs> hey man that's on you <laughs> the fact that you destroyed the 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 ozone layer with all your private jets let's be honest global warming is the fault of the pac-12 is this the tiger? 
Okay, that's a lie. But my point is, they did kill the rainforest, right? Right, right, right. Stop that! Like You're that's cold-blooded. Yeah, that's the level of ridiculousness. That oh, we're the greatest conference in the history. No, the you're... conference of champions. Yeah, congratulations on that javelin throwing gold medal. But that's bullshit. Get out of here! Get out of here, dude. I like. Come on. And this is why, like George Klyovkov, the commissioner of the Pac-12, at Pac-12 media days, saying, "Oh my God, like we're we're, we're ready for what." Do you have the boxes to pack your stuff when you're when you close a conference down? Come on, like, guy. What are you ready for? Come on. You're not you're not making it. All right, let's switch gears. Seven o'clock, uh, right here on the Monty Show, uh, presented by Jeffrey Davis and Academy Mortgage. Make sure that when you're looking at uh, your mortgage options that you get with Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage, 801-543-9666, 801-543-9666. NMLS number 278-545. Devery Davis and Academy Mortgage are equal housing lenders. A pleasure now uh, to welcome in Jake Brandon from Coog Connect. Jake Brandon, welcome to the show. Um, I should put the proper graphic up there so that um, people know. (laughs) But, uh, Jake, uh, good to talk to you. Good to see you on the show. First of all, let's get the plug out of the way right now. Yeah. I think you guys have been one of the more successful NIL, and is collective the right word, I guess, but one of the, the more successful NIL operations in the country. I think you guys have been more successful. What has been the key to your success? Um, I think early on the real thing that made us successful is the relationships we had with the football team. We, uh, we knew these guys. We had pre-existing relationships with many players on the BYU football team. We were used to having them at our house. Um, you know, they, they had hung out with me and my family, and we talked with them, like, hey, what, what does NIL look like for you guys? Um, it kind of started out with a joke. We had them over for a barbecue. I was smoking ribs, not on an Ironwood 885. I have a Pro 575, but I do recommend the Trigger. Um, and, <laughs> That'd go. That a boy. <laughs> yeah, barbecue pit stop, right, all the way. Um, but uh, – I said, hey, next time you guys come with this Built Bar deal, I think you should be buying the ribs. And uh, I thought it was a funny joke, and they didn't think it was very funny. And they got into me, like, the real situation of them needing some more assists on the NIL front. And uh, so we talked to them, and I have some buddies who are – one's got an MBA, and one's a pretty successful accountant. And we put together what I think is a really good team, a well-balanced team. Um, I'm just a, a football coach, football guy, uh, interpersonal guy. They do all the hard – they do all the hard stuff behind the scenes of making sure – that there's money and making sure that we've got a viable business plan or executing that plan. And I, I just kind of network with players, sponsors and the fans. And so I think that the good, the genesis of how we started the team we have, and then really putting the players first before profits, before anything else is what's made us successful. How much of a struggle has it been though? Because I, I think one of the things that you and I have talked about um, in our conversations, and certainly one of the things I've experienced at Utah trying to deal with Utah players and that whole NIL situation up in Salt Lake is that there really has been no point person. So when you yeah. when you guys looked at this and when you guys were starting to put this together, how much of a struggle was it to put together a program that, that people could get behind? Yeah, I think you've got to have someone who is that point person who's reliable who the players trust that will not bring them some sketchy, shady deal. It's going to mess with their eligibility. If there's a you know improper deal or benefits that are improper. Um, and then you've also have a person who's a point man who can go to these sponsors, who can go to these businesses and say, Hey, no, I can get you these guys. Like if, if you sign up with us, like I will get them there. If they, for some reason they can't, you know, our, our roster of players is over 50 deep. Like there's plenty of other guys who, who will, who will do this, you know, of, uh, that, I'd say 50 deep. That's people who we've consistently done deals with who I know will show up and do a deal and, and get it done. And, um, you know, we're not we're not Utah haters by any means. We've actually explored getting into Utah, um, helping Utah out with NIL. Um, I, and we just had a hard time finding that point man for those guys. So with those relationships, um, we've worked with some former players that I've coached. Uh, one of them was a former NFL player and things. And we'd love to do that someday up there because we have respect for the University of Utah. We like what they're doing up on the hill. Um, <laughs> Good cover. Yeah. <laughs> Good cover, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's just, I think it's hard to put a comprehensive team together that has the athlete's best interest at heart and uh, who the athletes trust, respect, and can be that point man to make sure it all goes smoothly. Coogconnect.com is where you find uh... – Jake Brandon and the guys at Coog Connect. So let's talk about that money piece of this. Um, you guys run a subscription service, obviously. Um, how much of that 
and tell me about the subscription, but the, the main question is how much of that gets back to the players and how have you guys found success? Do you feel like you have a good subscriber base? How has that gone over with, with BYU fans? Yeah. Um, so the, the money getting back to the players part, I would say most months we have to run about 150 to $200 in studio fees. And that's uh, having a studio that has good sound. This is not my studio, by the way. Our studio is in Provo. Um, <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, we have a, about $150, $200 in studio fees, depending on how much content we're creating that month. Um, and then beyond that, the rest of the money goes to the players. Um, so it's the significant portion. We have a few small operating costs, and it's mostly in, in our studio fees. And then the rest of the money goes to the players. Um, the, the second half of your question um, – which was uh, the subscription base we have. Uh, it goes up every month. We see we have yet to see a month where we don't pick up new subscribers. Some months it's you know a small handful, and some months it's a little bit more significant. Um, and the 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 players, it's nice to go to them and say, hey, like we went to Christopher Brooks, I think in July, hmm. and we said, hey, we want to get you a hundred dollars a month to come on and write an insider report for us. We want you're new to you're new to BYU. This is a new experience for you. Um, BYU is a unique school, as you guys are well aware. Um, we want you to come on and tell from an outsider's perspective, a guy who's really here for one year to try and get his stock up, what yeah. the BYU experience is like, um, all this stuff. And it's been pretty successful. We've seen a bump in subscriptions due to his practice report. So it's really, it's kind of like a perpetual thing where that we get more subscribers, we create more annual deals, which creates more content. And then that's more appealing for people to come and subscribe. And I, I really think we can, we can grow this. And we're rolling out of phase two in a, here in a week or so um, that will pay players royalties um, in perpetuity. I'm talking for the rest of oh, their wow. life. And it's, it's, it's a game changing thing. It's, uh, it's not happening anywhere in the country. It's happening here um, with the BYU football athletes and basketball athletes first. And so we're, we're really excited about it. Wow, Jake Brandon, Coot Connect is our guest. Find him at CootConnect.com. So $9.99 if I'm a BYU fan, if I am a football fan, because I think you guys offer a lot more than just BYU. Obviously, the brand is BYU, but what I've found from your content is that it's pretty good football content, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, it is the conversations, the, you know, I think the things you guys are doing with t-shirts and whatnot. So Let's talk about what, if somebody goes to Coot Connect, it click subscribe on top of the screen there. What are you getting for your $9.99 every month? So right away you get access to, I think it's, I don't know, it's dozens and dozens of player interviews that are exclusive. But within those interviews, um, I, I was a former football coach. I was an offensive coordinator at the high school level for a few years, a run game coordinator for more years before that. Um, we break it down with the guys. Um, some of these guys I've coached. So we have similar terminology, but there's really kind of a universal language of football. Yeah. And so, I mean, we'll teach some, we will get in there and we'll get to talk about how to work the mesh concept, mesh concept in the passing game, the smash concept. We'll really break down the minutia of it. Uh, I like to get the tight ends on because they can talk about running routes, stemming people up. They can also talk about getting their hat play side, working the angles of it. So if you just want to know the players better, there's that portion of the interviews. But if you're a football junkie, and, and basketball, mm -hmm. we had Trevin Nell on. He's a basket. He's so smart, guys. Trevin Nell's going to be a coach someday. And I'm not as big of a basketball guy when it comes to plays and scheme and execution. I, I enjoy the game, but I'm not like the big nerd I am with football about it. <laughs> and uh, right. and Trevin is, dude. So Trevin is breaking down this two two man game they run at BYU, and that you know they copied it from the Denver Nuggets, and like how how it all works, what Pope's been working with them. So I think for anybody, whether you just want to be entertained and and learn the players better, or if you want to kind of like a behind the door scenes, education, chalk talk experience with some of the you know best athletes in the state. It's it's a great way to do that. And then we offer discounts on, on things as well, in-person events and other things like that. So where do you guys come up with the these shirt designs? I've seen obviously, <laughs> you know, I see you on Twitter, I see Coot Connect on Twitter, and I see like the Clark Barrington shirt and like do the players get involved in that? Do you guys do that for them? Like how does that how does the t-shirt game work for you guys? Okay guys, the, the Clark Barrington t shirt story is a great story. Um, so, uh, like I was, uh, I had done lunch, I did some NIL deals with Clark and he'd mentioned a t-shirt and I was like, yeah, man, like we can do it. We, we con we work with several artists, uh, online. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've met one of them in person who's local, but most of it is online and they create poster designs for us. We sell autograph posters. They create t-shirts designs for us. And Clark's like, actually my, my wife came up with a design and I really like it. And I was like, okay, let's, let's see it. 
and he showed me the design. It's that design. It's the the helmet with Clark's mustache kind of behind the face. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and instantly, like, oh, that's a great design, man. That's like your brand. You know, it's it's super cool. All this stuff. And so, like, let's do it. So we we put together a deal. We made sure, you know, 90% of all the profits were going to him. Mm -hmm. um, and we made sure that, you know, there's just some small costs for mailing production and, and things like that. And he wanted like, I think, like 30 shirts for family and friends. So we got him a separate NIL deal that would cover the cost of those shirts. So he wasn't going to, he was oh, only wow. going to make money on this deal. Like we really went above and beyond to make sure he was going to get his shirts. He was going to get his money. And they sold like hotcakes, man. Like, and I got so many DMs of people saying, oh, my gosh, this is the best NIL T-shirt design I've ever seen. I Jake, say, it's one of the best ones. It's one of the <laughs> best ones because it's unmistakable what it is. It's, you know, yeah. the face mask. And, I mean, it, it's BYU without being BYU specifically. Like, it is – it's everything that you want. It is a – it's a fire design. The question yeah. is, does that shirt make him money? Yeah, and it has. It has. Um, so – there was his portion that he paid for with his NIL deal at cost, right, to get them. But yeah. there was another dozen or so of guys on his team ordered or friends ordered, and he's like, hey, I want to make as much money as possible. I'm going to hand deliver these. I see these people, so I don't don't pay the shipping. And so the first night we got the shipment, he walked away with around $100. Um, and he's going oh, wow. to get a lot more than that um, from this first run that we did. Um, and, so and, it is hundreds. Know, it's legit hundreds of dollars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, yeah, like yeah. – to me, that makes a difference because we're not talking about guys that are paying mortgages or have Lamborghinis they got to pay for. We're talking about a lot of these NIL deals in a lot of these situations. These are guys that are married. These are guys that have yeah. kids. His wife came up with that design. Yeah. Like hundreds of dollars puts food on their table. Like I actually, I, I'm surprised that more people don't do that. And I, I guess that's the thing at BYU as we talk to Jake Brandon at uh, Coog Connect here on the Monte Show. I think the thing that stands out to me so much is BYU seems to have that kind of infrastructure. I don't see that. And again, I only compare it to Utah because this has been my experience. I have really made zero progress on any NIL mm -hmm. stuff at, at Utah. But is it just an infrastructure thing? Is it an alumni thing? Like, why is business getting done in Provo? I, you know, it's hard to pinpoint it, but I think that there's been this, um, I would say, network in place with BYU. BYU is a program that's called the Built for Life program, and it's a pretty impressive program. And basically what it does is it networks players with some of the most successful business people in the state. Um, there's guys, I, I work with these guys all the time, we talk money, but there's guys getting paid internships with, you know, like Adobe and Podium and... Yeah um vivant and these some of these big companies in utah and uh their network and they walk i mean Taysom hill he had to make a decision like do i go and become an undrafted free agent in the nfl or do i go work for this investment firm that i've met through byu and start making six figures right away behind a desk and it was a kind of a tough decision for Taysom because he wasn't a drafted guy right and we can we all know he made the right decision now yeah um but there's a lot of that in place already so when I come up to people and talk with them, they're familiar with BYU football players. They're familiar with this. The Built for Life uh, program was originally a Kalani Sitake um, idea uh, right. that he, right. he came up with and started. So all credit to Coach Sitake and all credit to the staff at Built for Life. So there's, there's just programs like that in place. And we're kind of a nice icing on top of this big cake of benefits that BYU players get when they come to BYU. Yeah, and I think that's the exact right way to say that. You guys fit very well into the NIL pie at BYU. I think everybody knows about deals like the Built Bar deal. And, um, you know, if one more person asked me, where can I get a Cougar Tail Built Bar? But I think that's a really good example of how NIL at BYU works. And I yeah. think that's why you guys, your niche really works well. So one more time before we let you go, let's plug what you guys do. CougConnect.com, click subscribe. What does it cost? What do you get? And how does it work? Yeah, so go to the website, you can click the subscribe, or you can click on any interview that looks interesting to you, click on it, and there's the option to subscribe to get full access to the content. In there, we break, we get into all the players, we talk about them, we're not journalists, right? We're, we have a relationship with these players, right. so it's a, ca it's a casual conversation, you really, they have their guard down, they're answering real questions, they, I mean, we talked about how the defense changed with injuries last year, we talked about, we really broke it down last year, in the season, people are getting better reporting, I think, from us than a lot of a lot of um, bigger entities out there. Um, we're going to teach you about football, the game of football. Even guys, I'm telling you, we I've had coaches say, "Hey, I really liked how you guys broke this down." Guys who've coached for a lot of years. So, um, but we break it down simply. You guys want to understand that? 
And then we're going to mail you, if you want, you can get mailed posters at a discount, autographed posters. The money from those obviously goes to players and those posters. Um, we just made a hype track. Uh, it should be hitting iTunes and Amazon Music any day yeah, now. Yeah. Um, so, you, you know, we can uh, show you all the ways you can support the players in NIL. But really, the subscription is the most consistent, easy way to put funds in this NIL machine to, and have it mostly go to the players. Like, I love that people are buying built bars and they're they're all about it. I I just don't know how much, how many pennies on your built bar ends up in the players' pockets, but I can guarantee you just from being behind the scenes and making this whole thing work that the majority of your pennies from your subscription end up in the players' pocket when you subscribe if you connect. And that's not a small thing. That That's no. why I asked you that the first thing. I mean, because a lot of this NIL stuff doesn't end up actually benefiting the player for his name, image, and likeness. And I, yeah. I think that's a really important part of this. But hey, I... I I thank you. You've you've yeah. helped you've helped us a lot. We'll have a little bit more information on that coming up in the next week. But congratulations on all your success, man. I've talked to a lot of NIL people and Coo Connect, the guys at KooConnect.com, you guys have I think built a really strong program. So congratulations on that, Jake. Yeah. Hey, I think you guys appreciate you. Hey, by the real quick, you guys are killing it, just so you know. I uh, I've been <laughs> on you. I've been on some local sports radio and they were talking about this um this uh, Big Ten update with the escalator clause and the new terms, this new agreement on it. And the guys I was on the show with there, they they, they asked my input on it because I was in, you know, I'm, I do a lot of work with the college football team. And I basically just quoted you guys <laughs> on the show. And you guys broke so early with it. And you were talking about it in depth so early that they messaged me after. They said, hey, that's the most in-depth take we've had anybody uh, make on that. That's amazing. And I, I said, hey, I just want to let you guys know, I just copied that from the Monty show that I listened to in the morning. <laughs> So exactly. maybe you guys, maybe you can guys give those some credit, and then also the Pat, Patrick Beverly uh, news you guys broke was it yesterday or the day before? Yeah. It was the same thing. I was talking to someone, and they're like, "I really just can't see Pat Bev playing to the Jazz." I'm like, "Hey, you need to watch the Monty show because they were tweeting out this morning and on their show this morning that that's a he's a Laker now." So you guys are killing it. Uh, I love watching you guys every morning. Um, I try and catch every morning that I can, and I appreciate you guys having me on. Thanks, Jake. We'll talk to you soon, man. Appreciate you very much. Yeah. There you go, Jake Brandon, Coop Connect. Check him out. Uh, honest to goodness, and you know, I think the the thing that we get lost a lot of time is that it's this NIL stuff really is the wild, wild west. Honest to God, and I think when you look at guys like Jake Brandon and and Coop Connect and Jake, I know you know Jake as well. I mean, yes, it's, Jake and Jake. It's Jake a great Jake, name. You know, I mean, you know, but we, and we'll have a big announcement through Coop Connect coming up in a, in less than a week now. Um, already, but yeah, it, already, already. Um, but guys like Jake Brandon, I mean, they just, they're the ones that make the difference for the player. And, and again, I mean, no slight on, on, on built bar and, you know, all these larger deals, the money that you spend at a place like kookconnect.com, that money goes right to the player. I mean, it is, it's pretty impressive. The volume of content that Coog Connect has the, he wasn't joking. If you haven't seen any of Coog Connect's uh, like content, their video stuff, everything they do pretty much yeah. is on video. And it's not just, well, you know, I ran off left tackle and I was in the end zone. He, Jake Brandon's exactly right. It is, it is actual form, technique, schematics. Like they have in-depth football conversations with the guys on the field. It's, it's pretty impressive what they've been able to do. Yeah. And relationships make the world go round. And trust me when I say Coog Connect has the relationships. Check them out online, coogconnect.com. All right, coming up here in 15 minutes, we are going to get to um, the, the latest on Donovan Mitchell. Is that the right way to the say it? The latest update. That, if, if that is the right way to say it, and I think it is. I uh, want to remind you that we are uh, sending two listeners to see BYU in Notre Dame at the Shamrock Series. <laughs> Um, yes, sir. In Las Vegas, uh, it is BYU and Notre Dame. We're giving you two nights at the Palms Resort Casino and Hotel. Um, we are giving you two tickets to that game. Obviously we're giving you a $250 gas card to get you there. And we're going to give away that prize September 17th at barbecue pit stop. How about Jake Brandon with a barbecue pit stop plug? Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, so we're giving that away. Lehigh Barbecue Pit Stop, Saturday, September 17th. We'll have a watch party. Um, and the newest details on that watch party, Papa Murphy's Pizza is on board. We are going to bring Papa Murphy's Pizza 
to barbecue pit stop in Lehigh. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where is the, I need the, I need the barbecue, hey. barbecue pit stop. Papa Murphy's Pizza. Hell yeah. Let's go. We are officially prepared for the event. Let's go. We love, we're big Papa Murphy's fans on the show. You know that we talk about it a lot. Um, and now they are providing pizza for us. Uh, for the uh, live show, we're going to do our football Saturday show live at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh on Saturday, September 17th. We'll walk you up to the Oregon BYU kickoff. We'll watch the game. And at halftime of that game, we are going to pull the winner of the trip for two to the Shamrock Series for BYU and Notre Dame. All you have to do is go to any of Barbecue Pit Stop's five locations, Logan, Lee, High Layton, St. George, and Murray. They all have butcher shops. They all have meat counters. Like It's essentially a butcher shop inside of a smoker supply store. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And I am an Ironwood 885 guy. I'm a Traeger guy. It's in the backyard, as Jake said. Yes, I rock the Ironwood 8A5, but if you want a Yoder, the Yoder smoker's amazing. That's one of the most Big exciting parts egg. of the event. I mean, you can, you, you're going to come to the event, and we're going to be smoking pizza and wings. So you can literally see like these different tools in, in action, and you can ask these guys. like That's the thing with Barbecue Pit Stop, and I know I've said this before, but that's how the whole Barbecue Pit Stop thing got started. Like We yes. went in there. like So quick story. We were looking at our Ironwood and where we wanted to buy it and like what we were going to do. No, tell them. We were yeah, at Home we were, Depot ready well, to yeah, buy it. So we were at Home Depot yeah. and I was like, you know what? I don't want to I don't want to give my money to Home Depot. I don't want to pay a big box we're store. We're standing there. We yeah. are standing yeah. there in the Home Depot. I'm like, "All right, cool." And I I've like got the box out. I've got the cover. I've got some like utensils like and, and yeah. smoker tools and Jake's like, "No, I can't do it. I can't do it. I won't do it. We're leaving." I'm like, what? He's like, we're going to Barbecue Pit Stop. Yeah. Because we had been talking to Barbecue Pit Stop. We'd been talking to them about, hey, how do you, we were going to do a brisket for a big party we were having. And Jake's like, why would we spend our money here? And that's exactly right. Yeah. Why would you do that? So we went to Barbecue Pit Stop and we hooked it up. Yeah. And they were great. And now we're here. And now you're going to get to see Papa Murphy's Pizza uh, getting smoked on a, I, I don't know if we're going to use Traegers at the event or if we're going to use some Yoders or like what. What the setup's going to be quite yet. We're working out those small details. But the point is, you're going to get to see that stuff getting smoked in person. And I think that's absolutely amazing. And I'm a big believer in small business. If you look at all of our advertisers on this show, there's not a big box brand. Like you look at Devery Davis at, at, at Academy Mortgage. Devery is one guy. Yes, he flies under the Academy Mortgage banner, but Devery's a small business owner. You look at our guys at Barbecue Pit Stop, Steve. Um, is the owner of the Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh, and he's the founder of Barbecue Pit Stop. Yeah. He's the guy that started all these these stores and franchises. You look at Papa Murphy's. All of these Papa Murphy stores in Utah, they're owned by individuals, and there's a group of them, and they have a ton of, of Papa Murphy's across the state of Utah. Yep. We shop at the one on 4,000 right by at the district here in South Jordan. Great store. But all of your Barbie or all of your uh, Papa Murphy's across the valley are owned by individual people. Yeah, those are small business owners. Patronize them, give them your money. With all due respect to the big box pizza places, Papa Murphy's has people on the ground locally investing in our community. Yeah, support them like you do Steve and the guys at Barbecue Pit Stop. So we'll be there September seventeenth. We'll have Papa Murphy's pizza. We're gonna have wings. We're gonna have smokers, and we're gonna have BYU football. It's gonna be amazing. And it's all presented by Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage. Uh, make sure you check them out again. Uh, coming up in about an hour and a half, we're going to talk about renting versus buying in this state yeah. uh, and in this country because it's crazy right <laughs> now how much people are paying for rent. <clears throat> yeah, it's not good, dude. What's your rent right now? 1700 bucks. My mortgage is 1495 Yeah, piss you're, off. You're paying way more. Yeah. You need to buy a house. Call Devery Davis. He's got great down payment yeah. uh, programs for you. You can buy a house without putting a penny down when you call Devery It's kind of crazy. It Honestly, is. it's kind of crazy. I mean, like, you know, and, and, and again, it's not that, it's not that, like, you know, this stuff just happened, like, that this is like magic fairy dust. I mean, these are, like, legit programs that are available that seemingly, like, most people don't even know about. And, and, and it literally yeah. just takes a call, and then you get the education, and you're like, oh, well... Being that that is the case, yeah, maybe this is sh something I should do, and that's how quick it can happen. So, and you're that guy. 
Yeah. You, you, yeah. I mean, you're a 29 year old guy looking at buying a house versus renting. Mm -hmm. Ask Devery Davis that question. It costs you nothing to call him and get the best information in the mortgage industry. And again, Devery's a local guy. He's a small business owner. So you're not calling some huge office building where they employ a thousand mortgage officers who are just trying to make money on you. Yeah. You're calling Devery Davis and the Davis lending team. Call him today. 801-543-9666, NMLS number 278-545. Devery Davis and Academy Mortgage are equal housing lenders and our presenting sponsor on the BYU Shamrock Series drive away right here on the Monty Show. So let's uh, finish up this conversation on Big 12 expansion before we get to the NBA. Uh, and let's see, because I see there's a big conversation going on. How far back do I have to go here? Uh, let's see. Scotty King says San Diego lost the, the Chargers for a lack of support. All that population couldn't support the NFL. They really won't in the Pac-12. Built a stadium starting at 30K for big boy football. Get a clue. I think when you look at San Diego, Scotty, with all due respect, I kn knowing San Diego and knowing that market the way I know that market, San Diegans are great sports fans. And I think when you look at that market, not supporting the Chargers had nothing to do with San Diego. It had everything to do with the 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 ownership of the Chargers. And if you look at their stadium situation, if you go back and you research how the Chargers negotiated in bad faith, how the Chargers did not pull their end of the uh, of the rope, like this was not. Hey, Jimmy in Chula Vista isn't going to support the Chargers. Right. That's not what this was. That's absolutely not what this was with the Chargers. San Diego Aztec fans, San Diego State Aztec fans are a loyal, proactive group of fans, and they will only get bigger. And it's a Southern California TV market. And if you if I have to explain the importance of a Southern California TV market to the Big 12, I, I just think you're lost. Yeah. I, I think you're lost. In all senses of it, because there's a large part of this that is business. Yep. Uh, CKS says for the Big 12, there's no doubt BYU versus Utah rivalry would be a massive addition, especially if BYU can continue to improve. Yeah, I think BYU right now is a New Year's Six threat. If you put them in the Big 12 and note that they're already recruiting at a very high level, <clears throat> they're already developing guys at a very high level. So they're yes. taking three stars and making them productive contributors, depth players. They're, they're taking four stars and putting them in starting lineups. They're able to get the Warners and put them in the NFL next to Kyle Vinoy. Like, you look at the guys, Zach Wilson goes number two overall in the draft. That's not by accident. Yeah, Kalani Satake and this, this coaching staff, led by Tom Homo in the athletic department, the growth and development of infrastructure, Jake Brandon and the guys at Coog Connect, all of that is happening because... Kalani Satake has shown up and he's grown the program. That, to me, is a huge tip of the cap. Utah's already established. Utah is a national powerhouse. Now, I don't know how many people know that. Utah's a national powerhouse. They have great, tremendous recruiting. Great, tremendous development. They, I would love to see them throw the ball more because the more you throw the ball, the more points you score, the better your recruiting on offense is going to be. Yeah. But that's a process with wit. I totally get that. You want to win a game with defense? Call Kyle Whittingham. Yeah. It's that simple. And I think the Florida game and the USC game are two massive games because for some reason, the boys in Vegas and everybody else think that Florida's got a real shot to win this game. And I'm here to tell you they don't. They don't. I am a big believer that Utah's going to go there and win by double digits, 10 points at a minimum. And we'll preview that game next Thursday uh, right here on the show. Uh, let's see. Mark Ruckert said, would hate to see karma coming for Utah fans. Well, yeah, I mean, I think there it's, is some of that. You know, I mean, it's just it, what goes around comes around, and I think that's what's happening here. I, 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 I just think that's like there's no getting around that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, yeah, I think you're right. Patrick Boren, good morning too. Good to see you again, Patrick. He says, uh, San Diego is the eighth largest city in the U.S. San Diego no longer has an NFL team. Yeah. Okay. What are you saying? Mark all, Mark Ruckert says, SoCal recruiting huge, time slot huge, new stadium, decent football program. That will get much better recruits if they become mainstream. Yeah. it's exactly my point. Exactly my point. Strange Cloud says, barbecue pit stop plug. Yes. Exactly right. Yes. Exactly right. Dadgummit. J.K. Marshall. 
Mark, if I were a high school player, I'd choose San Diego State over just about any other pack team, save Washington or Oregon. If I were a high school player and I could go to any program in the Pac-12, I would pick currently constituted, I would probably pick USC. Let's take USC and UCLA out of it. And I'd definitely take Utah. I mean, Utah's the best program in the conference right now. Uh, unless you're a quarterback. Well, there's definitely a conversation there. And I think I mean, if you're a quarterback, it's a different thing. I think if you're... But if you're a quarterback <clears throat> in today's Pac-12, where are you going? I mean, you're going um, to USC. Okay, so if I take USC and UC out of that... Yeah, I mean, I think you're... Yeah, probably Oregon. I mean, let's not overcomplicate it. I, I think that... But who's the last great Oregon quarterback? Yeah. It's true. Marcus Mariota? Yeah, I suppose. But I think, you know, that. but this is also a difficult question to answer because, like, every, like, are you on your way to the league? Are you, you know, on a watch list? Are you a big deal? Like, if you are any of those things, you know, you're going to stand out. I just think that when I, if I'm a quarterback, I want to go to a program that's got a high-flying offensive culture. That's, that's what I'm looking for. You know, I want to be able to, you know, it's like, it's like uh, Jackson Dart is an example. Kids at kids at USC for what was it a year and you know Keaton Slovis gets hurt and then he steps in and makes a name for himself then he yeah. transfer like but you know, look so at you start but, see what can happen but look at and the guy that I'm going to point to is Justin Herbert mm -hmm. if you look at my guy the sex machine right chiseled steel baby right right my favorite quarterback in the NFL by far is Justin Herbert but he's got to show it now and the what's the problem speaking of San Diego he plays for the LA Chargers. He plays for the second team in L.A. Yeah. And he, I'm not going to say he's irrelevant because I think he's the best young quarterback in the NFL, but he's got to prove that because there's too many guys like Marcus Mariota. There's too many guys like Alex Smith. You know, I mean, when I think of great Pac-12 quarterbacks, I mean, Aaron Rodgers probably is the first guy that comes to mind when you talk about, hey, who's the guy that really has been over the top successful? Right. Because there's too many USC quarterbacks who have fallen flat on their face after running into somebody's ass. Mark Sanchez, there's, there's, yes. there's, yes. there's too many of those guys, right? Yeah. So when I look around the Pac-12, it's very difficult to pick a quarterback factory that's not USC. But USC hasn't exactly put successful quarterbacks out. Yeah, I mean, Carson Palmer is probably, I say probably, the most successful quarterback in the modern era at USC. Leinert was a flop. Darnold's a flop. Like, yeah, it's tough. And I don't want to go too far with it. I just don't see the Pac-12 as a as a quarterback league. I don't. And, I mean, obviously there are some exceptions there. But if I'm picking a school, it's Oregon or Utah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I, I think Washington has been miserably mediocre. Even when they were playing their best. And, you know, you had Chris Peterson there. And they were lovely to a certain extent. Oregon, hey, has Oregon won a national championship? No. Is Oregon better than they were with Chip Kelly or Bilotti? They're not. But Oregon is, is going to put you on national TV. Yeah, and the path to the league through Oregon is established. Right. I mean, defensively and offensively. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you can get that. But, I mean, there's no doubt that if you want to be a really good NFL player, especially on defense, you're going to Utah. Yeah. You're going to Utah. All right, let's get your thoughts in here um, real quick because then we got to get to the to the NBA. Um, man, a lot of people in on this this conversation. Justin Herbert will be the best QB in the league this season. Scandura, I hope you're right. Yeah, and That's I also think for Herbert, the other thing at play is that is that the Rams aren't going to be this good forever. You know, I mean, the Rams are just in a in a window where they're dominating the league. And Bro, there's... how about that helmet swing? Yeah, thing well, yesterday? And, I, and I think this Aaron Donald situation is kind of interesting. Like. There were some talks and rumors that Aaron Donald was going to retire after this last Super Bowl, that he that he was good and, and he was ready to just chill out. And obviously he didn't do that. And he decided that he wanted to go to a joint practice and drop some dudes with some helmets. Like, okay, cool, dude, I get it. But my point just is, is that the Rams are not going to be this good forever. Maybe well, another two seasons. And like, what's the story with Matthew Stafford's elbow? I yeah, mean, I mean, that's, that's another very... Story relevant question so that's why i say if you're Huge herbert story. you just got to keep pressing forward yep uh let's see patrick Bourne says i agree with monty i'm taking utah over san diego state list without usc ucla oregon and washington number one is utah number two is arizona number three san diego state 
I mean, yeah, if we're assuming that for for sure. Uh, Marlon Shaw says, I don't think Utah will beat Florida by two touchdowns, maybe 10. I think 10's the number. Yeah, 10's the number. Marlon, I, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. like them. And obviously, next week, we're going to be talking a ton of football Dude, on the here. show. Bro, it's Florida here. is really bad now, really bad. The humidity will take a toll on Utah as the game goes on. Watch for cramping in the second half. Yeah, the weather's going to be a factor. I mean, you're playing at altitude here, which should help you with conditioning and fitness. But I don't think, you know, depending on what the weather looks like next week, and we'll see, does it stay dry during that game? Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors on that. So, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that at all. Uh, uh-oh, look out, San Diego State Aztecs uh -oh, 21. Uh-oh. He's in the chat. He says, good morning from Cali. We're raging up about San Diego State right now. Fort Worth Poke 54. Good morning. Welcome back. Says, had Utah, Arizona, San Diego State, no to Colorado. See? Thank you. Finally, somebody agrees with me. Yeah. No to those weed smoking hippies in Boulder. No. Anyway, I I don't I don't I don't understand why Colorado gets an auto bid everywhere they go. Yeah, I don't get it. Like, what I is Colorado it. athletically? They are Denver. That's it. When is the last time that they've been really relevant across their athletic program? When's the last time they were truly a threat to win the conference in the Pac-12? Um. In the pack eight, in the pack ten, in the pack your mom. Um, like, are you kidding me? Every and they're like, oh yeah, Colorado's going back, buffs baby. Oh, Philip Lindsay's your running back all those years ago. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Uh, Mark Ruckert says San Diego State became much more attractive when the LA market went Big Ten. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Yep. Uh, Jesse P says Mahomes is still the best quarterback in the division by far. Could be. Could be. But isn't we'll this a prove it year for Patrick Mahomes? Yep. I mean, he's got guys on the sideline eating popcorn and talking to him. Yes, in his head, that's a commercial. Right. That was a that was a reference to an it's obscure commercial that you probably haven't seen yet. Commercial. Yeah, commercial. You know, you know. Marlon you know. Shaw. I do not want Colorado either. I would actually take Colorado State before Colorado. Yeah. Who the hell wants Colorado? I mean, come on. Not saying Colorado State should get in. Just get in ahead of Colorado. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Giggity says Aaron Donald is quietly one of the dirtiest players in the league. Oh, not so quietly even, Giggity. I, I don't think there's any doubt. Him and J.J. Watt. Excuse me. J.J. Watt. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Him and J.J. Watt have yeah. flown under the radar because of their dominance, but they are absolutely testicle-smashing jerks. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Cody Strickland says, you guys thought about doing a game show at the park or something when the NBA season kicks off? Be a lot of fun. A game show at the park. Doing you... a game showing at the park. Could be. Could be. We have a big NBA announcement coming up as well, so stick around. Uh, Rhett Smith said, did you hear Zach Wilson's back not playing football but because the kids are back in school? I, I don't know what you're referencing. Yeah, I, I don't know what that means. What do you mean? Um, knowledge 1975. I always want a school that won a natty in the last 50 years. Give me the buffs. Beautiful stadium, great school. Okay. Beautiful surroundings. Boulder's beautiful. Uh, Mid-Florida Academy says uh, it's going to be wet, humid, and hot in the swamp. I it, believe the proper nomenclature is moist. It's going to be moist, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. NY Jets fan says no to Colorado teams. I don't think they give a rise to the Big 12 or even meet the bar where other conference teams are. You want to make the conference strong, not weak. What has Colorado or Colorado State done? It's tough. Facts. I don't disagree with that. And people are like, 1990. Well, that was... Cool, that doesn't exist. That happened before I was 35 born. 35 years we all ago. Know the, we all know the rule. Oh, no, excuse me. NY Jazz fan says 32 years ago. Oh, excuse us. Exactly right. Fort Worth Poke says BYU, Utah, Arizona, San Diego State, Texas Tech, uh, K Iowa State, KU, K Kansas State, Cincy, and West Virginia, OSU, TCU, Baylor, Houston, and UFC. That could work. UCF, okay. rather. That could work. Uh, James Knight, is your watch broken, Monty? Chargers gears? Changing gears? Kidding. Soon, I promise. Alex Shakon. 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 Uh, Mahomes is going to uh, spend... I, sorry to interrupt, man. We got, uh, chats we got are the, in the, the botification is the happening. Sex everywhere. You know. You know. You know. Yeah, the, bo the botification of the show is happening. Thank you, Jake. I was yeah. able to... Um... It's sort of a natural reflex. I was able to hide them from the channel Thank and you. report them for pornography. You report those bots. Damn bots.
Get anyway. rid of those bots. Yeah, okay. exactly. Good, good. Uh, let's see. Alex Chacon. Mahomes is going to spend all of next year on his back. Yeah, that's probably true. It's probably true. UF weather is high of 93, 50, 50 thunderstorms, humidity off the charts, just like every other day in Florida during the summer. <laughs> exactly right, J.K. Marshall. Exactly right. Mark Record says Colorado only if um, networks pay more to everyone else. It strengthens the conference long term. That could be. That could be. You know, uh, NY Jazz fan says beep, bop, beep, beep for the bots. Yeah. See what they did there? Yeah. They absolutely did there. Right. Um, all right. This hour of the show is brought to you by. What? Why are you looking? I'm, I'm, I look over for, for I look over for support <laughs> and I get a glare. This hour of the show is brought to you by Wayman Brothers Construction. 801-654-1028. Yes, yes, yes. 801-654-1028. Again, another small business that we do business with here on the show because that's what we believe in. Support your local small businesses. Alma Wayman and the guys at uh, Wayman Brothers Construction, they're a family and they do great work. And you really, it's hard to trust contractors. I would not put my name on Wayman Brothers Construction if they had not done work in my house. And if they are they they are currently doing a massive project for me that's important, I'm telling you, you can trust Wayman Brothers Construction. And I don't say that lightly. Alma Wayman is a guy that calls you back, texts you back. Um, and again, I was saying earlier on the show that you know if you call them, you're going to talk to Autumn in the office. She's going to text with you. She's going to call you. Alma's going to be the guy on your job site. He's going to be there. He's going to be supervising his crew. You're going to get a guy like Josh who's going to show up and be one of the best carpenters I've seen. He really does everything, you know, from hanging drywall to, you know, mud tape, you know, bead to framing to you name it. The guys at Wayman Brothers Construction get the job done for you. They do it well. Their finished product is beyond reproach. I'm for real. And they have ethics. They have a work ethic. They have, when they say, hey, we're going to be here at the, on this day and time. They actually show up that day and at that time. Yeah. And to me, that just means so much because when you have contractors that show up yeah, whenever they feel like it or they're late constantly, we told you about that paver patio situation in our backyard. And this shows you the contrast and quality of contractors. We had a guy who never showed up on time, showed up at late in the afternoon, showed up when he felt like it. The project maybe, was maybe not. The project was three days late. I didn't have to worry about that with Alma and Wayman Brothers Construction. They were here on time. Like they poured a big concrete pad to put a, our hot tub on. Yeah. The guy, the concrete guy was on time. They had it framed on time. They poured it. It went off flawlessly. They built me a truck stack um, to go around that hot tub. It's safe. It's weatherproof. It's built. It holds me. And as you know, I'm yeah. 150 pounds. Yeah. Overweight. Right. And... <laughs> Like it holds everything because it's well built. That's why I trust Wayman Brothers. And I think that's the biggest thing. It's the peace of mind. Like whether it's the time thing, the quality that's thing, right. the, the the guys being there or not being there. Like that's why we decided to 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 bring them onto the show because we felt like you know if if one of you guys call them and I would highly encourage you, job big or small, just to call them and 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 see Talk what they say. It. Yeah, because because ultimately that peace of mind is what gives you the good experience like if you know hey he's going to be there the work's going to be good it's going to get done in a timely fashion especially when you're doing work on your house that's the worst thing hey my kitchen's all torn up you know they came in they demoed they didn't come back for two weeks and i'm left eating top ramen out of my microwave for two weeks because i can't cook anything that's the worst it's thing brutal. ever it's that's brutal. the worst thing ever so that's that's why that's why we decided to to bring Wayman on, and, and and I really appreciate those guys over there. Cody Strickland with a $2 tip and says, does Wayman do financing? Need to finish my house. Call him. I absolutely have options for you. Um, you know, I, I, I can only say so many times that if you have a problem, you need fixers. Wayman Brothers Construction is fixers. Call him today, 801-654-1028, 801-654-1028. Tell him you heard about it on the Monty Show. Without further ado, and to satiate the basketball, let's fans. light the world on fire again. Yes, let's talk uh, Utah Jazz basketball um, because I think there is a there is an interesting conversation around the Donovan Mitchell trade that I think matters, and I know that uh, Nick fans are here to tell you how amazing the Knicks are. Could it be a fact that perhaps the Knicks are not the best dance partner for the Utah Jazz? 
And one of the things that I find so interesting is unprotected versus protected. Well, it absolutely matters. But what I would tell you matters more is the date on those draft picks. Because if you kind of do a timeline check on where all these draft picks are, they're with teams that are not going to be at the bottom of the league. They're at teams that are going to be at the top of the league, which means that those draft picks are significantly devalued. So if you're taking, you know, picks from Golden State, from Phoenix, from like, what good is that? If you're taking, um, you know, unprotected picks from the New York Knicks, that's certainly better. But how many people believe the New York Knicks are going to be as bad as they've been for the next 10 years? Mm -hmm. I am not one of those guys. Leon Rose seems to be driving that team in the right direction. So picks from the Knicks are good, but they're not great. And the issue is, as this league turns over and evolves, and you look at where these picks are and which ones of them are protected, boy, it's awfully difficult to make the argument that you're going to get value for value for Donovan Mitchell. And that brings us back to this question of, maybe it's not draft picks as much as it's talent coming back in return. And Jake, I think when you look at the New York Knicks, I think, again, this goes back to why guys like McBride, Toppin, and Grimes have to be in this trade. Yeah, I think that Danny Ainge is, is committed to just not to not taking anything less than full dollars value for Donovan Mitchell. And and there there was a lot of people saying last night on Twitter that the Knicks were trying to get 90 cents on the dollar for the trade and that, you know, there was they're trying to get a discount basically. And and I tend to agree with that. I think that's kind of the narrative that we've been hearing since day one about this Knicks situation. Like, hey, Leon only wants to give the Jazz two unprotected picks and a certain type of player that is not named Quentin Grimes. And, you know, I, I, I think that that's been... The struggle is just that they've been far apart. You know, we heard, I think, last, early last week that they they had gotten a bit closer, but nothing was, like, imminent. Um, you know, and then yesterday, I think it came out that Donovan, you know, had his landing spots of, you know, the Knicks, the Nets, and the Heat, which is not surprising. That makes perfect sense. So I just feel like this situation for the Utah Jazz is going to get to a point where they got to kind of put it to bed and just say, hey, we're bringing Donovan to camp. You know, we're, we're going to put a pause on this for now. And, you know, you can, you know, reach back out down the line or something. I, I, I almost feel like that would be at this point better for the organization because every day Jazz fans want to know, hey, what's the update? What's the update? What's the update? And every day I feel like we're talking about, hey, like, there's not really an update. The update is Danny wants four unprotected picks, uh, six overall, and he wants these particular guys. And Leon doesn't want to do that. So <laughs> what's the update? You know, And that's why I say whether we're talking about the year that the pick is applied to, whether it's protected or unprotected, whether we're talking about Grimes versus whoever, like I just think the Knicks are trying to swing a deal that is different than what Danny Ainge wants to do. And until that changes, this deal won't get done. And for the Utah Jazz, everyone in the league is going to keep calling. So it's not like there's a shortage of teams who are interested, you know, from the Heat to the to the Hornets to Washington to the, you know, to to any of these other teams. I mean, hell, there were even conversations around the Raptors, you know, a month ago. Like everybody is interested. And that's why I say if you're a Jazz fan, like I think right now, I don't think that the trade is is imminent. I think that they're just having conversations, going back and forth, and Leon just trying to connive his way into getting a discount. And I don't think Danny's willing to do that. And that's why we're still just sitting here waiting and waiting. Yeah, and I, I think it is because when you look at if you look at like the twenty twenty three compensation, it's a you know, first round pick by a Detroit. Uh, protected one through 18 in 2024, protected one through 13 in 2025. Like, that, like what good is that pick? What, uh, like, and, and the other issue is a lot of these picks, if you don't use them, if you're just like, all right, well, I'm going to wait another year because, or I'm going to wait another year, eventually they turn into a second round pick. Yeah. Or they split and turn into two second round picks. So I look at that. I look at Washington's pick that, that they have. The Knicks got the 2023 uh, first round pick via Washington, protected one through 14 in 2023, protected one through 12 in 2024. 
Um, you know, first round pick from Denver, protected one through fourteen until twenty twenty five. Like imagine a deal getting broken on Twitter about, you know, the Jazz trading Donovan to the Knicks for like six picks, and all those picks were like twelve to seventeen overall. You know, like, hey, the twelfth overall pick or the seventeenth overall pick. Right. How would you feel about that? I mean, I, I just don't think that 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 is enough value. I I mean, legit, like I think that you know, you got to have, what, two or three of those be, like, top five, you know, picks? Like, that has to take place in order for this trade to make sense because yes. you're also getting development projects back. And while, you know, guys like Quentin Grimes and even if it was Obi Toppin or whatever, like any of these young guys, like the Talon Horton Tuckers, let's say, those guys, in my opinion, can be developed and can be turned into quality contributors on your team. But you still have to go through that process. Yes. So the prospect of trading Donovan Mitchell for a handbag of picks that are in the 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 mid to late teens. A handbag like, of picks. That just does not make sense when you combine that with developmental projects. If you said to me, hey, here's a here's a quote handbag of picks, but you're getting Kawhi Leonard, okay, cool. You know? or you're getting Jimmy Buckets, okay, cool. I can do that because I know that I can I can take Jimmy Butler or whoever that player would be, the X-Factor player. He can carry us, and I can build around him, and then I can, while I'm doing that, develop these other guys. But Danny Ainge is not going to have this organization in a position where he's picking late in the first round, trades Donovan Mitchell away, and is just simply developing. That is the recipe for a 25-win team. And I just don't see any way that Danny Ainge is willing to do that. No, and I, I also think that the the frustrating part of this whole deal is you, you're you not going to get commensurate draft pick compensation for Donovan Mitchell. You're not. And I think there's this belief around the league that the Jazz are trying to position themselves to get VW in the draft next year and – that's almost impossible to do. And it won't be through these draft picks because almost nobody, almost nobody has their own unprotected first round pick. The yeah. Knicks have two of those, which it which would be fantastic. The Lakers have two of those, which would be fantastic. I still maintain that the best avenue for the Jazz is to make a three-team deal with the Knicks and the Lakers, where Donovan ends up in Los Angeles, or excuse me, ends up in New York. And Boyan Bogdanovich and or Mike Conley end up in Los Angeles, and the Jazz wind up with four unprotected first round picks. Yeah, I, that's the to me that makes the most sense. Yes. is that going to happen? Probably not. Almost certainly not now. I mean, I I think if you are the the Lakers, those two first round picks, especially after the Kyrie situation, especially after the Bev situation, now we know that hey, Kyrie probably if he wants to be a Laker, he can do that next summer. They're going to have to make a trade with those two first-round picks to help this Laker team here today win a championship. Yeah. Because that's really probably the only way that's going to happen. And Mike Conley and Boyan Bogdanovich probably don't accomplish that. Yeah. So the question becomes, hey, are they willing to give up a first-round unprotected pick to get Boyan Bogdanovich? I don't know. Is he a better option than what they have now? I do know. This I think is why is. the Royce O'Neal trade matters. Yes, absolutely. But again... You look at Brooklyn, what is a first-round pick from Brooklyn really worth? Yeah. Now that Kyrie, Kyrie and KD stayed there, not as much as it would have been. And by the way, the Kyrie situation is beginning to look like the Lakers are just going to wait. They're going to send Russell Westbrook home. They are going to 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 run it back with LeBron and, and Anthony Davis and Pat Bev, and then they're going to pick up Kyrie next year. That is the thought process. So... You know, if that's how they choose to go about it, it may, it makes even more sense that they wouldn't do the Donovan deal because why would you give up? Because you're going to need those picks you have and whatever you get next year for picks in the Brooklyn situation to get Kyrie. So I I, I don't know. And and by the way, that's assuming that you know um you know he's still contracted with the Nets and there's a lot of complexities to it, right? But assuming that that Kyrie plays this whole year and then I believe he's he's got one year left here so then yeah, he'd be a he free opted agent into a, he opted into a, a player option so he'd be a free agent and then he would he would come to the Lakers and so if you're the Lakers why would you give up those 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 picks now why wouldn't you just wait a year tell Ross hey we'll buy you out you can sit at home or whatever we we just don't need you at this point 
and do what you need to do this year and then go and get Kyrie. Like why that just makes too much sense. It is the out you've been waiting for after you missed on the John Wall opportunity. But even if you look at the Jazz future draft pick situation, what is that Timberwolves pick worth? If we project Great question. Out, well, because one would think that they are going to compete for the Western Conference Finals, right? I mean, I, I would think so. One I, would think they damn well better. Yeah, I mean, that, with all the payroll <laughs> like, they seriously. have. Seriously, seriously. I mean, you're paying those two guys $100 million in Cat and, and Gobert. But what is that pick worth to the Jazz? Probably not a lot. That's a low, low pick. Yeah. So if I if I look at the if I look at the Brooklyn pick, that's heavily leveraged. We have no idea what that's going to be worth at this moment in time. Yeah. I I just look at these these trades that involve pick swaps and draft picks. You really have to be careful with what value you place on those picks, which is why Danny Ainge is asking for four unprotected first round picks. Yeah. And hey, if you trade me your first round pick, it's unprotected and you wind up first in the draft or, you know, 87th in the draft. That's the pick. Yeah. Right? No conditions, no maybe if ands buts one through 14 for the next 17 years or, you know, like those picks are almost almost meaningless in terms of drafting a player in a projected spot. And that's why I say this whole Donovan trade situation, like I'm tired of hearing this narrative around, you know, well, the Jazz are in tank mode and and they're just trying to trade away Donovan and THT is garbage and they yeah. don't know, like basically saying that, that the Utah Jazz don't know what they're doing. I am on a completely different wavelength with this. I think Danny Ainge knows exactly what he's doing. I think Danny Ainge is a proven um, performer in these situations where he's got to take a team from from a pile of crap to actually contending. And I think that the Jazz are in a, in a unique situation because they were technically contending for you know playoff positioning last year. And so people, th there's not an appetite to suck. That's the problem. Jazz fans are not in the mood for a 25-win team. No, they're not. But Jazz fans, the issue is, with all due respect, as the saying goes on the show, <laughs> Jazz fans have an inability, I feel like sometimes, to see what, you know, a certain move projects down the line and why you had to make that move now. It's no secret. We've been telling you since they signed Pat Bev, he was never going to put on the highlighter yellow uniform. It was no. never going to happen. He was going to get moved, and you were going to pick up whatever you wound up with from the Lakers, which in this case was Stanley Johnson and Talon Horton Tucker, which are both guys that can be developed more and can contribute for you. I don't care what anybody says. And by the way, for stat sheet guy, I don't really care what the stat sheet says because neither of them were getting great opportunity and when they did, they performed and played halfway decent basketball. And they're younger. So yeah. I just think that that you have to have the ability to see the vision. Hey, Rudy Gobert got traded because we had to lighten up the cap situation. Hey, Don's not traded because Danny Ainge is not willing to sacrifice price on the Donovan Mitchell situation. I think like, Danny Ainge is well aware that he needs four unprotected first-round picks like, in this deal. It has I, I to mean, happen. It, it has to happen. Yes. It has to. There's not... So when you talk about, you know, hey, are the Knicks the best dance partner? They're probably not. They're probably not because their their unprotected first round pick is not that meaningful ten years down the road. And I think that thing with the picks is really interesting because when when you roll out, hey, I've got unprotected first round picks, people are like, oh, great, perfect. That that that's a gold mine in the NBA. But then when you dig into it, and you're, and you're like, oh, well, this is what it actually looks like. You start to understand, oh, well, this is maybe why. Uh, Danny is not doing this deal. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's get some of your comments in here. Um, Knowledge 1975 says, sounds like pride. Yeah, on yeah. some level, I, th I think it is. I think that, that, that you know, Leon, Leon wants to pay a certain price. And whether we want to characterize this as pride or whether we want to characterize it as, you know, Arrogance, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm not really looking to label how Leon feels about it other than his behavior tells me that he wants a discount, and Danny's not doing discounts. Like, it, it's just very straightforward. No, he's not. No, he's not. I agree with that. I think that's – that. I think that Danny's – no. I, and by the way, the guy who shouldn't be doing a discount here is Leon Rose. Yeah. Like, Leon Rose cannot be the guy who loses on this deal. That's why I said yesterday, and I know, again, Knicks fans lost their mind over it, 
There's nothing wrong with the Knicks walking away from this trade. Bro, what are you talking about, Say, man? Saying, nah, I'm good. Let Cleveland pay that price. Let, you know, like, let somebody else pay that price. But I don't know, and Tony Jones at The Athletic reported that there is a second offer that's been tendered to the Jazz that is very strong. Hey, that may be the case. If if I'm the Knicks, I am. I have set a price, and I'm not going to exceed that. Yes, yes, yes. And I think if, it, if from what I understand and what sources that the Jazz have told me, it's two first round picks and Obi Toppin. That's what they'd like to do. And Danny, as we've reported for six weeks now, can have his pick of the veteran contract that makes this deal work. Yeah, we might as well just move on to talking about the All Star Game or something. If that's the if that's the the you know yeah, because I, I don't think that's going to happen. Like, that's not even a starting I really point. don't. I really don't. Scandura says giving up an unprotected first round pick for Boyan would be wild. I think it would be ludicrous. But that's what they said about Royce. And yeah. What did he get for Royce? You know? So that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it may be wild. It may be crazy what he got back for Rudy. But Danny Ainge is showing this ability to get it back. So don't be surprised if he does get that. No doubt. Now, Jake, as we sit here. Yeah. One of your favorite Air Jordans is coming up in the sneakers app. So come on, you know, bro. Like, I mean, I don't, dude, dude. I don't have infinite budget here, bro. Like, come you better on, start, dude. You better start whoring yourself like, out. I like, mean, Papa Murphy's needs to just give me more pizza so I can eat for free for the rest of my life. At yeah, this, point. maybe they'll Jesus. let you live in the pizza oven too, man. Holy cow! You know, like it is. It's it's, it's a problem, bro. It is problematic. I, I would agree with you on that. And the other issue is is that there's a there's a high likelihood you ain't got a chance in the world. I would try to get it for you, but see, they don't make it in my size. Right, right. They, they, they don't make because I wear a size huge hung. Um, I what quote, I wear a size huge hung. Yeah, that's correct. What, what is that? What like what like how does I didn't know that was a size. Yeah, hung like a steer. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. We're processing payment. Okay. Really? Yes. Uh, done. Done. I'm in line. You're in line. Okay. I'm in line. Okay. By the way, there is a, uh, there's also a dunk restock. Yeah. I'm not a dunk guy. Happening. I'm You're not, not a dunk, a dunk guy. guy. No, I'm not a dunk guy. Uh, there's a couple that I would, there's a couple I would look at, but, um, I don't know, you know, like I'm at this place in my life where again, being a well hung guy, uh, I'm being at this... a well hung guy. Yeah. What dude, what, what do you mean? I'm sorry. If was, you keep talking about being well hung, the bots are going to come back into the chat. Well, they were just in the chat a minute ago, and I got rid of them. Okay, so now I think I'm getting error messages. It said it processed, and now oh, it's you know, so now you we're, out. We're fighting here. You out, we're homie. We're fighting here, bro. You out. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway. We'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I am uh, I am interested to see exactly what, uh, exactly what happens with the Knicks and the Jazz. Um, because I, I honestly don't know that this trade happens. You know, I've said, I've said before that I'm a big believer that 65-35, that Donovan comes back to camp with the, with the, with the Jazz. And by the way, the Nike app is so busy right now that it has crashed. Seriously, it has crashed. It is their, their app is, their app is struggling to perform. Oh wow, they dropped a ton of stuff today, in the, in the sneakers app. Did they like really? a full? If you don't know what the sneakers app is, you need to check it out. You need to check it out. I mean, we got we got the Air Jordan One Heritage getting dropped right now. Really? Yeah, high top, pretty sick. What app are you in? Sneakers app. The sneakers app. Sneakers app. Yep. We've got we've got a we've got a, a restock on the Air Jordan Thirteen French Blue. Um, I, where is this? How am I not seeing it? It just this? says in stock. I'm in the in stock tab, and they all are saying in stock. Really? Yeah. I don't buy that for a second. Okay. Well, I guess I'm done. Which then. one are you looking at? I, I'm. A, I'm. A, I want this in the in stock tab. This one right, right here. Yes. That's okay. that's the one I'm. That's the one I'm looking at. Correct. The Ooh. Air Jordan One Heritage. It's a red and white. Air Jordan One High. Daddy likes. Yeah. I'm. Broke. You know. I'm broke as. Right now. And it's got that nicer leather. That's why it's 170. dollars It's premium leather. Yes. So you know. How many sneakerheads do we have on the show? Yeah, are, uh, do we have any sneakerheads? Are you guys like I'm out, dude? This sucks. Yeah, like where where are we coming down on sneakers, bro? Like you know, because I'm I have to admit I'm not a, a Don Adidas guy, not an Adidas guy at all, Nike guy all day. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you're trying to get in. I'm trying to get the. So the, the way this works is the sneakers app basically tells you, hey, we're dropping this shoe at this day and this time. 
Usually on any given day, it's at, at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. That's usually when they drop for us. And so, hey, hey! see, so show that, do the close up. Got him. So they give you this got him screenshot when you win, which is sick. I think that's really cool. So you got you got the Air Jordan One High Premium or yes, Heritage. I mean Heritage. Heritage. Um, all right, now it's letting me submit payment on the Heritage. It's spun for Ooh, a minute. we can be matchy matchy. Well, so that's the other thing as part of the collection. There's a lot of a lot of matching happening. There is a lot of matching happening. I'm wow, processing. They, they dropped a lot of shoes. I'm processing. Why are they doing this to me? I don't like, know, bro. I, I don't have the funds to do this. Well. Like, I am broke AF. Oh, one something. One something. You did. Why? Well, not, well, because the Apple card got charged. So yeah, we've well, won something. I don't, I, don't, you know. I don't know what it is, but we won something. That's you know. how you know. Yeah. Mrs. Monty's probably sitting over there like, what are you guys doing right now? We're, we're, we're having, f we're doing, it's a Friday. We're doing a good show. I'm just going to throw the phone across the room so we can't do it anymore. Uh, all right. Let's see. Aliyah and Kel says, my wife bought me some shoes for Christmas. Okay. Dude, come on. Come on now. Christmas, it's, it's flipping Labor Day. Mrs. Monty's birthday is a week from Monday. Yeah. My beloved. Yeah. Is a week from Monday. She yep. doesn't. She doesn't care. She, you know, I'm her birthday gift every day. She says, right as she vomits on herself. Uh, JB says I'm too poor to be a sneakerhead. Uh, Giggity says my shoe game is limited to Costco specials. Oh my god. Hi, hi. Um, have you guys seen that Kirkland series rubber bottom? Kirkland <laughs> series rubber bottom. <laughs> That's funny. Um. Let's see. San Diego State Aztecs 21 says the only San Diego State reference that matters is Sleeping Giant that has awakened. Right. Okay. Hope so. All right. Uh, Clay Clayton says, watch these grown men shop for shoes. It's what we do Don't on hate, show. Don't hate, bro. Don't hate, man. And Morris Don't says, uh, New Balance $60 perfect. Nah, come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, Smooth B says, pay the ridiculous robbery price. Nobody is giving them foreign protected picks. Listen, I, I think there's a chance they get foreign protected picks. I mean, I, I really do. And again, this conversation isn't whether Donovan's worth that or not. Right? Yeah. Like, that's not the conversation. The conversation is how much is someone willing to pay? That's what it's always been. You know, that's what it's always been. So I, I just don't think we, we need to, we, you can't get it confused. It's uh, in, your, in your mind when you're thinking about this, it's not like, oh, well, is Donovan Mitchell worth for unprotected picks. That's not it. What it is is, hey, to our situation, to our team, is he worth it? Is Kevin Durant worth it? Is yeah. Kyrie worth it? Like, that's how you have to go about it. Yeah, you know, I, and, and I think Brandon Butler makes a good point. If the Vets get traded first, then we're rebuilding around Mitchell. If Don gets traded first, then it's a rebuild. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree 100%. I, I, you said that the other day. I think the yeah. order of the trades absolutely matter. Yes. Um, let's see. Talking with Raphael Podcast. Says, I'm a sneakerhead, but not just for Nike. I like Adidas, Converse, New Balance, Timberland, et cetera. Okay. I, I, man, I used to be. But then I figured out wearing my actual shoe size, the one that fits my foot, right, is a lot more comfortable, right. Um, so I only buy. I'm a Nike guy yeah. through and through. I am hundred percent through and through. That's 100%. that's the only way I can do it. Cash out, James. Good morning, friend. He says only way you're getting four is if there's three teams involved, and I think that has to be. Yeah, I think that that absolutely has to be. You know, it is. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. Uh, Dylan Rodriguez, the French Blue 13s in stock at Valley Fair Mall. Uh, Foot Locker. Really? What? Nice. Dude, you guys know that Foot Locker is not 13. getting stocked anymore, right? Like overall, like that's yeah, coming they don't to an get, end. They don't get drops. They don't get. Yeah, which yeah. is really unfortunate because that was one of my favorite things as a, as a youngin. Well, and what was crazy is we went to the. Um, we went to the Nike outlet in Lehigh the other weekend. Right. And they just had. You know, AJ5 Royals sitting there. Just chilling, dude. Just chilling. Just like, chilling. I, it, it was crazy. Um, let's see. Clayton says, these guys shop for shoes the way Nick's front office shops for Spida. Did, did we get him? Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Alex says, can't wait for the new Crocs to drop. The okay. new Crocs. Okay. Jose Ultra Cowboy Christian says, Monty is booty reporting. I don't know what that means. I'm reporting on people's booties. Okay. Okay. You know. Uh, let's see. Smooth B says two unprotected tops. It, that's no, just, not just not realistic. Yeah, it's not. That's not realistic. Yeah. You know, like it's, 
it's one of those things where you're worth what somebody's willing to pay. Yeah. Look what Minnesota paid for Rudy Gobert. Does that mean that's what Donovan's worth? Certainly not. But I can tell you the Rudy deal is helping the Donovan deal. It is. There's no, I mean, it is. I honestly, if I, if I thought that, hey, fair market value, what's Donovan Mitchell worth? I think he's worth two unprotected. I think he's worth three, um, you know, three protected picks. And I think he's worth two of those young guys. Yeah. I think if I'm, if I'm the Jazz and the Knicks called today and, hey, you know, Leon says, hey, I'll give you quickly Grimes and two unprotected first round picks. How do you say no to that? Yeah, I don't think you do. How do you say no to that? I don't know how you say no to that. Yeah. I, but I'm not the one. I am not the one making those making those phone calls. Yeah. And again, the stupid Damn. bots are back in the chat. And now I got to go through. Die. Again and again and again. I wonder if YouTube ever does anything about that. I think it's really difficult to do anything about that. Yeah, it's tough. I, I mean, anybody can start a YouTube account. So Yeah. Um, <laughs> Clayton wants to know if anybody's got a good recommendation for an adult dating site. No. Oh man, dude. We don't. I don't. But here's the thing. I, I don't know. Is that a joke or is that like a real question? Yeah, it's a joke with the bots. Oh. Uh, San Diego uh, Aztecs twenty one go Suns. And at this point in my life, it's a New Balance kind of world. I'm just living in it. I love it. Yeah, I love it. We're talking shoes. Yes. You know. Uh, Josh Lemmert says, are you guys going to break down the Snow College football game from last night? All right, let's move on. Um, Obviously not. <laughs> Scandura says, um, topping Cam and two unprotected first-round picks. Uh, I'm not a topping guy. Obi Toppin's a really difficult ask for me. Like, I, I don't think that Obi Toppin gives you value for Donovan Mitchell in return. I don't. I, just, I think Obi Toppin's a good player. He's not a great player. I think Obi Toppin had a really nice back half of the season last year, but that isn't that doesn't mean that I'm going to take Obi Toppin. It like it just is not. Yeah, I I think the right way to say it is he's not a player of consequence. I mean, he's a nice player, but he's yeah. not like you're not saying to yourself, oh damn, like I got Obi Toppin, like that made the deal. You know, that's just not what what it is. Yeah, I I don't know. Griff one eighty one says, I agree the price is what a team is willing to pay, but you guys keep saying Leon wants a discount. He wants to keep his pants. No, I don't I, think he wants a discount at all. <laughs> I don't think he wants a discount. I think that Leon Rose is a very smart business guy. He's got a price he's willing to pay. He has put this value on Donovan Mitchell. And from what I'm told, that value is two unprotected first-round picks, one other pick, so three total, mm -hmm. and he's willing to put – two young players and, and a vet in that deal. And I think he would go two unprotected, five total picks for Grimes and, and Fournier. Yeah. I, 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 I think he would likely do that. I think he'd like not to trade Quentin Grimes. But I think what Danny Ainge and Leon Rose both realize is this is a give and take. And if, if, if Danny's going to take those two unprotected and three, you know, frankly, three trash picks, you're going to have to put a better young in that deal. Now, if I'm Danny Ainge and Leon Rose is willing to give me two unprotected first-round picks, two young guys and a vet to make the salaries work, why would we say no to that? Well, it's because they don't initially need to, and I don't believe want to, trade Donovan Mitchell. I, I don't think that's where the, the Utah Jazz are at. So it, it's, it's, what, it's value for value. It's negotiating value for value. The reason I use the word discount is because the, the price has been set. It is, hey... We need this to make this deal happen. So when I repeatedly hear they're trying to do that, I'm like, hey, well, what did you expect? Did you expect him to be like, oh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll give you Donovan Mitchell for two picks and, and some players? Did you expect that? But see, like, cash out James. The, here's the problem. You, he wants to put form, form, hello, hello. Fournier, Reddish, McBride, and three unprotected first-round picks in there. Why would why so, would Danny do that? Why would the Jazz put value on Evan Fournier? Why would they put value on only three unprotected first round picks? It, it it it's it's not a situation where you can say, okay, it's Donovan Mitchell. This is the price. That that's not how this works, and you need no. to understand that D Danny Ainge is not interested in more soft French players, which is what Evan Fournier is. He's not interested. In taking discounts, like I, I, I know that we might view that differently. In my opinion, you're asking for a discount, going there with an offer that's really not close to what Danny Ainge has set the bar at. And by the way, 
The reason Danny Ainge is so committed to the bars is like you said, he doesn't have to trade Donovan Mitchell. So why would you go to Danny Ainge with anything other than a full price offer if you want know. Don? That's what I mean. Like that's why I say, is Leon literally asking for a discount? No, Leon's negotiating. But at some point it becomes, hey, you're you're if you're not going to come with a full price offer, stop showing up. Like that's where I feel like we are. And see, I I'm kind of aligned with Scandura. I would do three unprotected, but I also agree that's an overpay. I would do I, exactly. But Donovan Mitchell, the hard part is. You have to have you have to keep assets to go make another deal if you're yes. Leon Rose. And I just don't think And that's another layer. So being that that's the case and the price is the price, why would you do this? Go and find I another opportunity. I would walk away. Yeah. I would walk away. I and just, I think that's the best point you've made. Like it makes sense. I, I think Leon Rose is a savvy business guy and I would simply turn and walk away from this deal. Yeah. It, it's not good yeah. for what you're trying to do it. And I look across the rest of the NBA. The Lakers situation I still maintain is the most fascinating situation in the league. The thing you talked about with Russell Westbrook, what do you do with with Russ right now? I, I don't know how you fix that. It's $47 million. It, it, I don't know how you fix that. Yeah. And now, like, they signed LeBron to this extension, and they're saying that they're giving him input into players. Why? He brought you... $47 million worth of a headache. Yeah. And I actually don't think it's an option to sit him down. I, it's not an option. Why? Because you need him. You At some point, don't you have to operate uh, in the mindset, if you're the LA Lakers, don't you have to operate in the mindset that eventually he returns to some form of what he was? I think the mindset is we're going to do whatever it takes to win a championship. That's what I think the Lakers do. And sometimes... Sometimes, admittedly, that comes back to bite them in the ass. And there's no doubt about it. That's what Russell Westbrook is, is a bite in the ass. Uh, specifically, it is embarrassing for LeBron James after, you know, you find out, you know, whenever that was, six, eight months ago, that that LeBron had an opportunity at John Wall and went with, went with you know, Westbrook. I mean, that's that's a problem. And so, to me, yeah, do you would it be perfect world for Russell Westbrook to wake up and suddenly get back to shooting his normal career percentage from the field? Uh yeah, that would be great, you know, because he is a tenacious defender, he's a nice physical guard, he can play in transition really well obviously. Like he does a lot, there's no doubt. I'm not saying he sucks, but what I am saying is that you can't continue to miss as bad as he's missed. And I know that that's like nitpicking, but there's a difference between struggling from the field for like five to seven games in a row and shooting the ball off the side of the backboard for most of the season. That's a problem, yeah. man. And and I just think that you can't, you can't live in that space anymore if you're the Lakers. It's time to get going. The bubble championship is no longer good enough. I'm tired of hearing about the bubble championship. That was one shot that Anthony Davis made. If you were the Orlando Magic, keep talking about the bubble. You're not. You're the Los Angeles Lakers. There's an expectation. There is a, a certain bar that you have to live up to. Yes. So it's time to yes. get your ass going. Yeah. So, yeah, I do think you can pay out Russell Westbrook. But, but I don't know how, if you're the Lakers, you justify that to a fan base. Because if if you either – I don't think financially you're buying him out. I. Well, that where somebody they are, is. somebody is sure, but where the Lakers are, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, so it's just a question of like we look at these three unprotected first round picks, and you know we we as as we talk about these NBA storylines. Yeah, I, I I just don't know how if you're the Lakers or if you're the Jazz or if you're the Knicks. I have no idea how you make a trade that you can feel good about unless you get an Avalanche. Because uh, these unprotected picks, there's so many being swapped and so many being sent around the league. I don't think general managers know heads from tails. Yeah, I agree. I, honest to goodness. I, I, I really don't. I just, I, I look at Russell Westbrook and I say to myself, that guy is in there somewhere. And eventually, if you're giving him 15 to 20 minutes a night, you're never getting $47 million out of him. No. But if you give him 15 to 20 minutes a night and he can he can give you a different dynamic than a Pat Bev, mm -hmm. if he can give you a different dynamic than a LeBron, than a I mean, they have 86 guards on that roster. Yes. You think the Jazz are heavy guard wise. Like 
you look at the guards that remain on that roster, I mean, you can't tell me Russell Westbrook can't play on that team. I, I, I still, t- I just am not. Well, I, 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 and the problem is, is it's not some easy fix. Like, it's not like, hey, you got to do this or that better. Like, it's not, it's not like some easy thing for him to fix. Like, shot making is such a mental thing. And when you're missing that badly, like, you, you, like you can't tell me Westbrook wasn't struggling mentally last season wasn't like fighting it wasn't like it, it like it just was a rough season and and I don't know how you get him back into form like I understand okay it's Darvin Ham now there's a different situation now like you know it's a different setup like okay I get it but I just think that that it's LeBron James right he just signed an extension with you it's Anthony Davis like like you can't afford to be that bad it, it can't happen anymore. So if you come out and you are that bad, you I think you have to sit him on the bench. If not, send him home and just be done with it. Like, hey, dude, we're not interested in having you put on the Laker uniform anymore. We'll pay your contract, but you're not playing for us. Like, then, I could see that. But then why why Max Christie? Why draft him? Why, like, I, I, that made no sense. Like, I'm looking at their salary cap. I understand why you brought Thomas Bryant back. I totally understand that. I understand, hey, why'd you pay Kendrick Nunn? Totally understand that. But I look at some of these other deals like you need, you're in a position, the LA Lakers are in a position where Austin Reeves has to perform. Yeah. Well, the report came out that he's going to close for them. Like Austin Reeves has to perform for you to win a championship. That's where the Lakers are. That I, I, How, bro, how? How is that even possible? That you're the L.A. Lakers, and this is where you are. I that it bad is, choices, bro. Bad choices. This is why I say to Leon Rose, walk away, walk away, man. You know, like I, I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put myself in this situation, like where you're paying, yeah. Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and Russell Westbrook, a hundred and thirty million dollars to miss the playoffs last year. Yeah, you can't do that in this league. Yeah, I don't care if you're the Lakers. I don't care if you're the Celtics. I don't care who you are. The Knicks. Yeah. You you can't pay $130 million and miss the playoffs to three guys. Yeah. It's why Danny had to trade Rudy Gobert, as pissed off as Jazz fans were. Can't pay a guy who can't score on his own and is a liability at the end of games 23% of your salary cap. Are you talking about Westbrook or Gobert? Exactly right. Exactly right. Like, by the way, it, as crazy as this sounds, Russell Westbrook is costing you Carmelo Anthony Mm -hmm. because Carmelo Anthony is a guy that everybody seems to believe that the Lakers would gladly take back. Thanks. I I would gladly take him back if I'm the Lakers. I thought he performed well for them. Yeah. They can't afford to bring him back. And now there's all kinds of people thinking he's going to Brooklyn. You know, you're watching your championships be won by somebody else. Yeah. You know, like it's crazy to me. It's crazy, and that's why like, I look at the Boston Celtics and I say to myself, what are they going to do? They're not championship ready. Not with Brooklyn built now the way Brooklyn's built. Wow. I think if you're Boston, the story you're telling yourself is that Brooklyn's super dysfunctional, and you're hoping that it just continues. I mean, that's that's what you're telling yourself. And, and I think that, you know, frankly, that the, the I feel like the Brooklyn Nets franchise and fan base deserves this season to be like the hey, this is what we actually signed up for a season where you're like a 60-win team and you just go ham and like you're dominating the league. And like, I feel like that's what they deserve. Yeah. And and I just don't have a lot of confidence in Kyrie and Ben Simmons. I know what Kevin Durant is. Kevin Durant showed me everything I need to see. Have I liked how he handled this whole situation? Absolutely not. I, I don't like it. Did, did, I, you, did, you, did you see James Harden yesterday? Yeah, he looks like he's in shape. Neat. Have, have you, you got to show me that you can win, dude. Have you seen Giannis at the at the at the Euros? Yeah, but that's the Euros. Uh, but it's but the, the Euros, shots dude. he's taking. It's the Euros. And the shots Giannis is taking and not, making. He's not making those in the league. The defense is superior. Right, like, but he's shown he has the ability now. Yeah. The East is getting better. Uh, okay, I can agree with the that. The East but is getting way better. We disagree on James Harden. You're convinced that the guy's going to come out and have some ridiculous year. I think James Harden like, can be a 24 uh, to 26 point a night guy. Well, uh, with the shape he's in, let's be honest about James Harden. The guy yeah. was hurt because he was fat. He was out of shape. He was unprofessional. He was not ready to fat. compete. 
Yeah. Now he he he. There was a picture of him the other day. He's legit got like a ten pack. Yeah. Like the guy is shredded. How? And you put him next to Joe, and you put him with Tobias Harris, who's way overpaid. And oh, by the guy, uh, by the way, my guy Tyrese Maxey. <laughs> You've got like three legit weapons and a guy who can really shoot. They are going to be good. They will make the playoffs. I just don't believe in James Harden as a championship winner. He's never been, even in his prime. Like yeah. I just don't buy it. So I don't know, man. I look at like look at Brooklyn's roster. Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving. Right. What do you think Ben Simmons does? Play center. Play center. Plays. He plays center on defense, and I think he plays point guard and I think you have scoring options in Kyrie and Kevin Durant that's what I think you do Joe Harris Royce O'Neal Seth Curry Patty Mills Cam Thomas mm -hmm. that's their bench and don't forget about Kessler Edwards and TJ Warren mm -hmm. that team's good that team's deep now they have a bunch of dudes who haven't been able to stay healthy especially TJ Warren and Joe Harris but Nick Claxton can play in yes this league. and Kevin Durant likes playing with him Nick Claxton can play yeah. And I, I think you look at Royce O'Neal. Royce O'Neal is very good in a box. Put him in a box, play some defense, and then go sit down for the last eight minutes of the game. Yeah. He'll do that. He'll do that well. He'll give you some energy rebounds in the middle of the paint. He'll get James, or excuse me, he'll get Kevin Durant an extra shot. Yep. He'll do he, his he'll job. He'll make those little plays. Yeah, he'll do his job. He'll make those little plays. Yep. They're going to be good. They're going to be good. And if James Harden gives you, I hell, if he gives you twenty or more, because you can't tell me that that Tyrese Maxey isn't a twenty point a night guy. I don't doubt that James can put up twenty five a night. I I don't doubt that at all. He is a he is a he is a proven scorer. Uh, he is proven at scoring the basketball. There's no question about that. I think the 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 questions that I have is where does James Harden go in the playoffs? Where does James Harden like? Where is that thirty and ten game in the playoffs? Where like you know what I mean? Like that's what I well, wonder, and I and I wonder, you know, one thing they're gonna have to figure out, and this is something that you've been really on, um, is the Tyrese Maxey conundrum. Hey, this kid and can it is play. A conundrum. This kid can play. This kid can score with the best of them. And we can't make him an afterthought in our offense. The problem is, is that Joel Embiid is just as important, and James Harden is just as important. So how do you how do you figure that out? And my feeling is, is that James Harden's mindset is, hey, I'm going to be um, selfless this season, meaning that I am going to be in shape, I am going to take less money, and I want to win. Thirty three million. Yeah. So so thirty three. If, if when when his peers are getting forty to fifty million, he and took so thirty three. If, if that's where you're at financially and mentally, then my thought would be that James would come into this season saying, "Okay, I, I my goal is to be at twenty twenty five a night. Some nights I'll be asked to put up forty because of injury or whatever, but for the most part, I'm going to be a twenty twenty five a night guy." But I'm going to put up 15, 16, 17 yes. assists. I'm going to facilitate yes. and put these guys in positions to score, and that's what's going to allow us to thrive as a basketball team. And if that happens, okay, then I start to come to the middle with you on them you know, contending for a championship. But I need to see that be put together by Doc and, and the rest of that staff. Well, and I also think one of the things that – Philly's done a nice job of is limiting the importance of a cork maz. Mm -hmm. Or like you look at their cap, I mean, P.J. Tucker and Daniel House immediately make you better defensively. Yes. On a team that's pretty good defensively already, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I look at what you're paying Tyrese Maxey at $3 million bucks. $3 million, bro. I mean, you're, that team's going to be a handful. They've got to stay healthy. Joel Embiid has to stay healthy. Tobias yeah. Harris is making $38 million. Tobias, you want to talk about a $38 million on that team is crazy money. But... You look at their depth. Don't forget DeAnthony Melton. Mm -hmm. That I'm telling you, the East is better than we're all giving them credit for. Yeah. And that's why I say, if you're the Knicks, Donovan Mitchell brings you tremendous value. Tremendous value. But, again, I also wonder about Cleveland because Cleveland's this other team um, that that is in the Donovan Mitchell sweepstakes. They they have tried to do a sign-and-trade with Colin Sexton, and, and Danny has not been interested in that. And Okoro, I don't think, brings enough value. Danny's rebuffed that yeah. from what sources have told me is that Isaac Okoro just doesn't bring enough value to the Jazz. Yeah. So they have, they have not been willing to engage in that conversation. It'll be interesting. Again, Tony Jones at The Athletic, who I think is arguably the, the one of the best 
not arguably, he is absolutely one of the best NBA guys. Yeah. Is saying that there is a a second team that has made a substantial offer that has Danny Ainge's attention. We'll see who that is. Um, we'll see if that ever comes to fruition because I think if you're the Knicks, you should walk away from this deal. Go make a different deal. Go make another deal. Go yeah. find a way to do whatever you need to do. But I would not be making I would not be paying anything more. And again, I value it at five total picks, two unprotected, and anybody but Grimes. Because mm. I'm not giving up. And I'm probably overvaluing Grimes at this point. But, man, if I could make that deal with with Quickly and McBride. Yeah. And if they'll take, if the Jazz will take Fournier and something else to round that out, I'm doing it. See, but that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Fournier can be in the deal if you're giving the Jazz value from a player standpoint. A uh, younger, younger like, player. Emmanuel Quickly, I think it's is and I don't know it Nick fans what you guys think of Emmanuel quickly but I, I think Emmanuel quickly brings value to that deal so my point just is with the that discount conversation we we're having earlier that's what I mean like there's a deal to be made here it could be done but there's not enough compromising on either side as far as from Leon of like hey if I want to give you Fournier I got to give you Grimes or you know quickly or who, who the hell ever right like one of those guys yeah. Like you're just not you're not showing a willingness to do the deal, uh, all the way, and that's why I just don't. I, I just think you have to walk away from it for now. Come back to this, you know, with a month to go to the trade deadline. Get Danny back on the phone and see where see where the Jazz are at. That's what I would be doing. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think I don't know. Top Junkie says, "Will KD listen to Steve Nash?" Monty, your opinion? I don't think KD will listen to anybody. Yeah. And I don't think you pay him to listen to the coach. I think that what has to happen is KD has to believe in his teammates. Mm -hmm. Because if Kevin Durant's not going to pass the ball and he didn't want to pass the ball to James Harden by some reports, I think that becomes a problem. I think Would if, you pass the ball to Brooklyn net James Harden? I would not. I would not. And I, I think it is I think it's one of those things that makes it very difficult, in my opinion. Um, I think it makes it very difficult for them to win because mm -hmm. I think he has to give the ball up. And I think him and him and Ky Kyrie apparently are still very close friends. And I think he they need Ben Simmons to be a running mate. They don't need him to score. They need him to be a point guard. They need him to be a guy that can run, dish, rebound, dunk. dunk. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's what they need him to do. And he on defense, they need him to lock down guys. They need him to be that badass defender he used to be. They need him to go and get a Giannis. They need him to, and nobody's locking down Giannis, let's be honest. But they need him to lock down a James Harden. They need him to go and get Tyrese Maxey. They mm -hmm. need him to go and get, you know, whoever's hot for the Celtics that night. Yeah. Tatum or Brown. That's what you need from Ben Simmons because you're going to score 110 points. Yeah. There, nobody doubts that. My question is, do they need Kevin Durant to listen to Steve Nash? And I don't think they do. I think they need him to have a relationship with his teammates. That's what that's what I think they need. Yeah. Um, you know, because I, I think it's very difficult um, to build a winner if your teammates don't like each other. Hoops World, good morning to you. If the Lakers don't trade Russ, then Braun won't pick up his player option and will leave next offseason. He already picked up his, yeah. his they renegotiated his contract. Yeah. Uh, Smooth B says the most exposure Utah's had since Bulls Jordan finals. New York, baby. Well, you're probably not wrong about that. You're probably not wrong, uh, wrong about that. Uh, let's see. Scandura says Westbrook's going to go somewhere and average a triple double. I don't know if he'll do that, but. I, you can't tell me that guy can't play ball anymore. Yeah, I just, I mean, yeah. Look what LeBron and AD have done to how many people. Look, clearly Westbrook can still play yes. at, at a high level. I, I, I think the problem comes in when you're when you have the expectation of the Lakers, and I, and I know I keep saying this, and I don't mean to beat a dead horse in the ground, but, but it is the Los Angeles Lakers. It is the Boston Celtics. Like you have expectation in, in, in these particular franchises. If if Westbrook was doing this on the Houston Rockets, nobody would care. We would laugh, and then we would say, give me some more, you know, Christian Wood back then, or, like, you know, some of these other guys that they have. Like, I, I just think that the expectation in Los Angeles when they signed him was, hey, we're bringing this kid home. He's a UCLA guy. He's 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 He grew up here. Like, this is his hometown. And he's going to come and he's going to ball out. So then when you're shooting it off the side of the backboard, all jokes aside, it's a bad look. And then when you don't make the playoffs at all, 
it's a bad look. So the so the idea that that you would essentially just swap Vogel for Ham and say, oh well, you know, like this is this is our plan. Darvin Ham has a system that's going to work for Russell Westbrook. I don't know that that works because there's no fixing a broke jump shot, and that's exactly what he has. And I don't know how you fix that or figure that out or you know whatever. I, I just don't know what that looks like at this point. Yeah, I totally agree, and and I think that's been one of the major themes of this summer has been I don't know what that looks like. Yeah. This hour of the show brought to you by Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage. Coming up here, I don't know, probably in about 25 minutes, we're going to start talking about renting versus owning. And one of the things I want you to understand is that you have options when you call a guy like Devery Davis, 801-543-9666, 801-543-9666. And I'm last number, 278-545 for Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage. When you call Devery Davis, you have options. Devery Davis with the Davis Lending Team powered by Academy Mortgage. All right, first-time homebuyers, listen up. This one's for you. There's a huge misconception on how much it takes to buy a house. Is it 20%? Is it 10%? Is it 15%? The answer will surprise you. There's four mortgages in the United States. Two of them require no down payment. Two require very minimal down payment. Out of that down payment, um, there's lots of places to get it from. There's state funds, county funds, city funds, lots of ways to buy a house, no money down. When I was 18, I got out of high school. I actually bought a brand new house, no money down, never regretted it if you have questions give me a shout glad to walk you through it have a great one there you go Devery davis at the davis lending team and academy mortgage and again small local business Devery davis is a guy that you can absolutely believe in is going to take care of you because at Devery davis's office you're not a, a a number you're a guy you're somebody that they want to do business with for the rest of your life so when you talk to their people they know you by name. When you call and you say, hey, it's Tim. I'm trying to figure out X, Y, Z. Oh, yeah. You're not like, well, what's your file number? Hey, what's your account number? Because you're talking to Devery. You're texting him. One of the things that I really appreciated about Devery Davis was is that I used to, when I was buying a house, I would text him numbers, MLL, MLS numbers, like real estate numbers for a property, right? I would text him that number and he'd shoot me back and say, hey, yeah, this is FHA. This is not conventional. You can do this. You can do that. You know, the other thing you should talk to Devery about, your lending options on investment property. Because Devery's going to tell you, hey, this is a good investment property. Hey, here's what you're looking at here. This one does that. Here's like, he'll give you information about, hey, is this a, a, a property that's good for an investment? Call Devery Davis. Trust him. I trust him with my money. You can trust him with yours. 801 543 9666 Devery Davis. And uh, the guys at the Davis Lending Team are fantastic. NMLS number 278 545. Devery Davis and Academy Mortgage are equal housing lenders. You're watching the biggest and the baddest sports talk show in Utah, The Monty Show. Um, I want to talk about this LIV golf thing real quick because this is something that we have looked at. Um, and I just haven't, you know, we we haven't had the time to get to it, but Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy have formed a new primetime golf league. When you hear that, Jake, what are what do you think when you hear that? Well, I immediately love that it's Tiger Woods. I mean, I, I think that Tiger, love it or hate it, is still the face of golf. I think that, and and I think what's encouraging is Tiger knows that. Like Tiger understands. Hey, this is me. I'm a Nike guy. I'm the face of golf. Everyone, when they think PGA Tour, they think Tiger. Um, and they don't think Phil Mickelson because Phil went to live. And I think that Tiger understands that the live golf situation is a problem for the PGA Tour. And and I think Tiger also understands that the PGA Tour needs to get more innovative. It can't just be tournament after tournament, and that's what's good enough anymore. So to me, this concept of having these guys compete in, in like more, I mean, I, I don't know how you would say it, but just quicker more fast paced golf stuff that is creative, you know, um, rather than playing like a four day Thursday through Sunday tournament where nobody watches Thursday and Friday, few people watch Saturday and everyone watches Sunday. They know that that's how it goes. So if you can get into a situation and I think they're thinking about doing this on Monday nights, um, I don't remember the, I don't think they've released when yet at, they're going to do this, but 2024 it'll start. Yeah. So like you, you have to do some planning. You obviously are not looking to compete with the NFL. So this is probably an over the summer thing, I would think. Um, but think about it. I mean, how cool would it be to have, 
you know, guys like Tiger Woods and Rory and Justin Spieth or, or Jordan Spieth rather, um, you know, in this in this sort of event venue, playing like a chip shot challenge or like like there's so many different things you could do. But the point just is is that they're looking to bring more tech into the sport. They're looking to make it younger, and they're looking to make it more fun because that's the thing with golf that I think they haven't been able to overcome is is it's a very serious sport. It's yes. like, hey, don't talk while he's shooting, and then we're going to say outlandish stuff when he does shoot, but then you can't talk while he's putting. And, and it, it like it's just this very different place. I love golf. I'm a big golf fan. Um, I, in fact, I think there's nothing better than Tiger on Sunday. I think all of us golf fans would agree, but unfortunately Tiger's body's breaking down just like any great athlete. So to get him to get more of him playing golf, whether that's at Augusta or somewhere else, I love it. I absolutely positively love that concept because it's going to bring viewership to the TV. And I, and I just think it's going to make, make money. And that ultimately is how you beat live. You make money and you pay these guys so that they don't have to leave for some Saudi-backed golf league. That's yeah. what I think you have to do. And on the screen, what we have there is you can see the the course, if you will, that Tiger and Rory are talking about. Um, it is half hybrid where it's like a golf simulator. And then there is a green where you're going to have to chip and putt to finish the hole. So you drive on the simulator, and then where those shots are ends you up on the green. I think it's brilliant. I yeah. think that if you look at that, it's an arena atmosphere, so it's like the Phoenix Open, the 16th hole, yeah. where you have all the fans around. It's in prime time on a Monday night. Um, it's going to last two hours. All of the things that you see on the screen right there from Tiger and, Tiger and Rory at Tomorrow Sports – I mean, all of those things play right into what the the you know the the issues have been with the PGA Tour. Yes. But the other wrinkle of this that I think is so interesting is that players only meeting that Tiger Woods had before last weekend's BMW Championship. Because what did Live Golf do? I don't know how many people saw this. I feel like it flew under the radar. Live Golf served Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy with subpoenas because they say that meeting was a a meeting and conversations were had that violate the PGA's antitrust exemption. And they say that Tiger and Rory need to answer for the contents of that meeting and what was talked about in that meeting. And it's Live Golf's way, they say, to open the door to destroying the PGA Tour. Now, having said all that, I don't think Live Golf has a leg to stand on. I think when you look at Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, I think they're very calculated dudes. This has been... this. Tomorrow golf concept has been in concept for over 18 months. Yeah. So this was long before uh, live golf was on the scene. So I look at all of this stuff in golf. I actually think this makes a lot of sense. This deal that the PGA tour announced where if a golfer plays on tour, if he is a full exempt member of the tour and he misses the cut, they're going to cash him out for $5,000 to pay for his travel and his expenses to play in that tournament because he won't get a paycheck out of it. So they're going to give him five grand. Yeah. Their pots and purses are going to go up to 15 and 20 million. Like all of this stuff is happening and it's in direct competition to live golf. I think it devalues live golf. And the funny thing is you brought up Phil Mickelson because one of the points I wanted to make today was I think Phil Mickelson's irrelevant. I think yeah. Phil Mickelson has absolutely disappeared. Nobody cares. Nobody thinks about Phil Mickelson. Everybody thinks about Tiger Woods. Yes. Everybody thinks about, hey, what's Tiger doing? Oh, Tiger's doing a new Monday night primetime golf thing? Yeah, I'm going to tune in and watch that. Where's Phil at? Come on. Where, where, where's Phil? Oh, that's right. That's right. He's getting ready for his next LIV tournament that nobody's going to watch because it's not on TV. And I, I, I just think that live golf was so poorly concepted mm -hmm. from a PR standpoint. I don't know how, if you're Live Golf, you thought that you'd be able to just, what, forget that you chop people's heads off? Is that you You thought? And that's the amazing thing. Did you think that Americans were going to forget about 9-11? Saudi stooge. Did you really think that the media wasn't going to ask about you chopping people's heads off and cutting up bodies and yeah. murdering reporters just because we were here to play some golf? And the term for that, I understand, is whitewashing. 
But let's be very honest about it. Phil Mickelson took blood money because he leveraged himself, right? You look at the other guys, what have they all said? We're only here for the money, mm -hmm. right? They're willing, everybody has their price. Everybody has a price. They're willing to take the millions and millions of guaranteed money to overlook the fact that the Saudis cut people's heads off and they chop bodies up. Yeah. They're willing to overlook that. I'm not willing to overlook that. Tiger and Rory and a lot of other guys are not willing to overlook that. Yeah. And I think what you're seeing is all these guys that are trying to win the FedEx Cup, they don't want to talk about that yet because once the FedEx Cup's over, I think you're probably going to get five or six more announcements of guys going to the Live Golf Tour. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that was so interesting this week was this news that, oh, well, hey, we announced all this. Maybe we do want to come back to the PGA Tour. Yeah, what did the PGA Tour say? No, no you're banned. You're not, you're not able to come back. And I think that right there is going to prevent people from going to live golf. Yeah. Is it anti-competitive? No, it's not. It's not. I think it's the right thing to be doing. So you can sue and you can subpoena and you can do all that stuff. But I'm not somebody that buys into this idea that live golf is being anti-competitive. I really don't. Yeah. I, I, I really, really Yeah, don't. I agree completely. Uh, Yo, Jimbo says, to be fair, media reporters are essentially enemy combatants. Give the Saudis a break, LOL. Yeah. Um, Saudi stooge. I think he says tongue in cheek. Um, Tom Basilius says, "Going to be a rough. It's going to be rough to be part of anything if we are going to get outrage about Saudi money." Well, absolutely, absolutely. That that is part of it. K. Nuring, good morning to you. Yes, make sure that golf is fun to watch. You have to. Yeah. You have to. Have to. And again, I don't think it's anything. I don't think the Saudis are alone in their atrocities. There's no question about that. And we we sit here and talk about buying Nike shoes all day long. Nike's not innocent. Nike operates but in China. But that's not what we're... But this is yeah. a whole different thing. Yeah. This is a whole different thing. When I look at the Saudis, one, you have to take them at face value one off. You can't compare the Saudis and the Chinese. And hell, you can't compare the Chinese and the Americans. Like... Nobody's perfect. Look at what's going on in, in Afghanistan right now, right? So we all have skeletons in the closet. Afghanistan. We just didn't cut their bodies up when we stacked their bones in the closet, right? right? Like we didn't lie about murdering them. We didn't chop their heads off. We right. didn't, you know, we didn't, you know, roundly and aggressively limit the rights of women. Like we didn't, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. To, you don't have to compare the Saudi atrocities to what's going on in China to make it okay to go play on the Live Golf Tour. Like, there's nothing wrong with talking about these issues with Saudi Arabia at face value. Yeah. Is it right that we buy Apple products that are made in factories in, in third world countries? It's not. Okay. Is it right that we buy Nike shoes? It's not. But it's also not right that the Saudis murdered Jamal Khashoggi because they didn't like what he was writing in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. It's not right that you, we could go on and on and on, right? There's no reason that we as a populace have to, you know, have to look at all of these things to talk about the Saudi stuff. Yeah. Cause you don't have to, yeah. you don't have to. So yeah. I just, I, I think that whole conversation is very interesting. Um, Ryan Skandura says, Monty, people think nine 11 was done by Saddam Hussein. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that. The late, can we please, the late Saddam Hussein. Um, stooge. You know, it is what it is. Over 2,000 New Yorkers are dead, Alex Chan says, correct? Um, Scandura says, buying Nikes from our iPhones, driving our Japanese cars. Well, frankly, I drive German cars. Okay, that's probably not where I needed to go there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Cam Harrison says, golf is awesome. Golf is awesome. Yeah, I mean, golf is a, is a great sport. It just has to be, you know, it has to evolve a bit here. All right, speaking of golf and news and chopping people's heads off. Right, yeah. And the Big 12. Right. Texas Tech released a study this week. Is watching the news bad for your mental health? Yeah, it is. So I can tell you, I used to be a news junkie. Yeah. And I don't watch the news anymore. I, it's pretty rare. Like Mrs. Monty and I used to eat dinner and watch CNN and CNBC and nobody watches Fox News. Um, well, I'm not, not a big fan of Fox. You know, uh, 
Okay, how do I rephrase this? So Mrs. Monty and I used to watch dinner um, flipping around the news channels, right? We don't do that anymore. Now, instead, we watch Peaky Blinders or something. Right. But the funny thing is, Texas Tech released a study that showed watching the news obsessively is the term they use. But basically, the study says watching the news on a daily basis creates stress. It creates heart conditions, depression, mm -hmm. and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I actually think that's absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think... Watching the news on a nightly basis shortens your life. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just negative. Like, that's the problem. It's just always negative. Like, any story we have is someone dying or someone getting ripped off or some Ponzi scheme or, you know, something about the thing that we can't talk about on YouTube because YouTube it doesn't like us talking about it. Like, yeah, it's just it's always something super negative. And, and that's what I think attributes uh, to this. And I think that, you know, the problem is, you watch the news and then you go to, you know, social media or other outlets or whatever, and you get more of it. And that's what I think the issue is. It just bombards you. And that's why I don't watch the news anymore because I just... When's the last time you flipped on a news channel intentionally? I, I couldn't even tell you. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you. I don't, I don't watch the news at night. I don't watch it in the morning or during the but day. I, I can't think of the last time that I watched... I used to enjoy, like, when we lived uh, in Arizona, like, uh, we would watch Jake Tapper sometimes. That was okay. You know? When is the last time I watched, like, the local... Like, I think before Chris Cuomo got popped, like, I think that was, you know, good stuff. Yeah, I, And he I got can't... in trouble. You know, yeah. Well, you know, defending his brother and lying about it. On, you know, right. Allegedly. Hey. Um, so I said, yeah. Hi, Mr. Oh, Mrs. Monty is going to join the show today. Wow. Hello. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't think we watch the local news very much. I can't think I was just sitting here thinking to myself, when's the last time I like flipped on KSL or when's the last time like I watched Fox 13? You know, you know who I watch more than anybody else? Allison Krogan for the weather. But that's a whole different discussion because the weather <laughs> here is never right. No, a, a, in all seriousness, <laughs> the weather here is never yeah, right. They're never right about the weather. <laughs> the weather I, it was supposed to just... be like it was supposed to be. Oh, we're getting a bunch of rain in the next 10 days. And what have we gotten? Yeah, Very ninety and sunny, yeah. and it's what our. And main? by the way, it's our fault. It rained. I tried to get in my hot tub again, and it rained. Well, maybe you could get in the hot tub more. That way, it'll maybe rain more. No kidding. There you go. That's an I option. Should. I think the thing with the local news, though, is uh, in my mind, I don't feel like I'm going to get fair and balanced news in the local news. I feel like the local news. There are way too many stories that they put out as news stories that are actually long commercials. A company has paid to talk about whatever, you know, dietary thing or a pillow or a blank, you know, like whatever it is, whatever crazy thing companies actually pay your local news stations to be able to come on and have a segment about whatever their thing is. And I just don't feel like local news is like bringing you like fair and balanced news anymore. So but that's why I don't watch it. I just mm -hmm. don't feel like I'm going to get much out of it. That's an interesting, you know, like it, the other thing is, so I think one of the things we've learned is that everybody's got an agenda. Okay. CNN's liberal Fox news is conservative, right? but like Sinclair who owns a ton of news stations across the country, is actually a, you know, a, a a very 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 conservative country, um, that has had controversy all over the place, and the reason they've had controversy is they forced their employees to read like pro political party editorials or play video prepackaged videos right. supporting you know the Republican Party. They lost like a ton of supporters over it. So I think, Mrs. Monty, you're right. There is no fair and balanced. There is no such thing as, oh, yeah. well, hey, I'm going to watch the news and just get the news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't think that exists anymore. But I think that's also a result of so much localization. There's so much information that's available. It used to, you know, and I'm not in any way saying the good old days. I'm not. That That is not true. But I think the what in our days. in our minds, what used to happen was there was less availability of information on the Internet, on 
every single thing that's happening you know, at TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all these things. We used to have a lot less of that. That's really, when you think about it, the last 20 years, uh, uh, actually probably really more 15-ish. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. That have changed that so rapidly that we used to depend more on our local news stations to bring oh us God. the like, national news. Think about, think about news. Dan Rather, Walter Cronkite. Right. Think about, uh, you know, all of the, you know, the... The Maury Povich's wife, whose name I can't remember, um, the Asian news lady, um, oh, Connie, Connie Chung. Chung. Connie yeah. Chung. You look at, you know, like all of those great news guys we used to rely on anymore. Now we don't even know who they are. Like you don't know who hosts the ABC Nightly News or CBS News or who hosts Good Morning America right now. No idea. Michael Strahan. Could He's be on there with. Yeah. Um, Could be. I, I mean, anyways, but that's the funny thing. Like yeah, I don't, we don't know. Watch it. Like Matt, I used to watch Matt Lauer every day on the Today Show. Like I just think TV has changed. And and whoa, by the way, by the way, Greg Hawkins is back in the chat. Well, my God, I well. gotta say, I watched the trailer for the new project for the Dude. new film. Yeah, today. Greg Hawkins. Greg Hawkins. No man, I'm scared. Greg Hawkins, you should come on the show and promote your movie or or promote on, your man. movie in the in the chat or something, dude. That movie, I agree with you, Mrs. Monty. That movie looks It's gnarly. Yeah. And uh It looks what? scary, dude. Like that looks like a like we tell you all the time, Greg Hawkins is legitimately, you know, an actor, model, you know, famous dude. Y'all feel and me? It that, is in Filipino, though, I think. So, like, is there subtitles? Like, I Yeah, but we're happy to watch to... that Netflix show, Squid Games, in oh, subtitles. Yeah, I don't mind watching yeah. the subtitles at all. I'm just, you know, Squid asking Games. a question. When does the new Squid Games come out, by the way? Probably, Probably not soon. You know, no. by the way, by the way, the, the new, um, oh, my God, the Jon Snow show. Oh, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah. The, the new Game of Thrones House is of out. Dragon. Yeah, the House out. of Dragons. That's out. But we got to finish Peaky Blinders season six. Yeah. We still have not finished the Ozarks or Ozark. And that's the last season of Ozark as yeah. well. But maybe we'll, uh, you know, By the way, on the Greg Hawkins, something. Greg Hawkins says that he uh, prefers to read the news. Uh, I agree with that. I read a lot. Uh, Ryan Skandura says no news station is bringing you fair and balanced. LOL. Truth. Right. Yeah. It's just Truth. like wild. I'd rather read like that's why I like AP. If you read an article from the Associated Press, even though people say they they lean you know more to to the left, their articles are very fair, fair and balanced. They really are. They they're not telling you what to think. They bring you facts and let you make up your mind. And that's what I want. Like. I don't like how everything is just so slanted. Everything. Like, I like to watch CNN sometimes, but yeah, you sometimes can't. I'm like, God you damn, can't. you're playing this. You are beating to the death the same story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kay Nuren says, we need to keep politics and sports separate, but killing people just to do it is not right. The problem is politics and sports are the exact same thing. Yeah, dude. They're the exact same thing, and they don't need to be keep, kept separate. The thing that we need to be able to do that we can't currently do in this country is have open, honest conversations. Yeah. We need to be able to talk about guys like, you know, Donald Trump. We need to be able to have an honest discussion about Donald Trump where we're not in fear of getting shot, stabbed, or punched in the face because we agree or disagree. Like, yeah. that's what we we miss the the open and honest exchange of ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it that, that – but I, I can tell you right now, sports and news – run almost parallel. parallel yeah i mean they right are they, the other. crowds the, the audiences the that's same why thing. that's why the saudi stooge thing is so relevant that's yeah. why the liv golf thing is so relevant yeah I mean, it's just you know it's a perfect example and if you think that sports and politics are not uh together i want you to think about the effects of ab abortion bans on female athletes let me tell oh, you man. they'll get an abortion you know. somewhere else but it is a problem because you can't be pregnant and be an athlete. Well, I and mean, that if you only want, affects female athletes. Uh, oh, this got very serious now. Uh, I think if you want sports and news to get, look at Brittany Griner. Yep. Look yeah. at Brittany Griner. You want news example. and politics and sports together? Brittany Griner. I mean, I, Colin I just Kaepernick. think all this. Yeah, Colin Kaepernick. I think all of this stuff runs together. And it's simply because we won't communicate. And yeah. we won't be honest and we we don't truly want freedom. Like, I mean, there's a whole different discussion there. Tom yeah. Basilia says, I take local news and evening news over cable news slash YouTube news all day. Well, I think you have hmm. to I think you have to have a grain of salt with all news. Because yeah. I don't know that you can trust 
Uh, Caleb Harrison says, true. What's up, Caleb? Good to see you, friend. Uh, brother. Brother. Says the local news is bad for you. It could literally making it, it could literally make us negative. Positive vibes. Oh, yeah. Totally. Y'all yeah. feel me? Yeah. No, I think negativity. You, brother. I, brother. I think negativity in the news is a huge problem. Yeah. Uh, Cash Out James says any type of news is not uh, is just not good for your mental health. Okay. Michael Harris says, I will say that uh, Jeff Kaplan's minute of news at 8 and 38 past the hour in the afternoon on KSL radio is appointment radio. He's brilliant. I'll have to check that out. I haven't seen it. I have not seen that. Uh, William says, Monty show is all the news you need to stay sane. Thank you. William. Good to see you. Uh, Ryan Scandura. I actually did th- that news study on myself and man, the difference it makes me too. Scandura. Like we, Jake, Got to the point where he didn't want to hang out because I wanted to watch the news. Yeah. Like he hated. And Mrs. Monty and I used to, I I wasn't even kidding earlier when I said we used to eat dinner and we would watch CNN or Fox News or CNBC or, and we just have stopped doing that. And and my stress level's gone way up because that means Mrs. Monty and I have to have conversations. Um, You know, as a married man, as a married man, you never want to talk to your wife. Right, 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 right. Right. I might have been overstating mm. the case a little bit. Anyway, maybe a little bit. That's why we spend time in the hot tub. Yeah. You're not not talking. Uh, let's see. Greg Hawkins okay. says, uh, <laughs> sorry, Monty. I've been busy taking the little girl to school. LOL. First week. Oh, that's right. Aww. Greg's back here in Utah now. Greg's back well, here in Utah. Well, that's part of life, man. Yeah. Yeah. Take school and I got to. <sighs> I'm going to try and not sound like a dick here. What? Get off my lawn, guys, present. Uh-oh. The kids need to go back to school. Yes, they do. Because the gym is miserable. Right yes. Now. Get your ass back in like, school, man. We were in the gym last night, and it's just all these teenagers like using terrible lifting form to destroy their, their vertebrae in my squat rack. Like, what are you doing? My, you own it. <laughs> it is. It's mine, right? My you need the EOS to be built and open. Yeah, that's by the way, that's a really good point, Mrs. Yeah. Monty, because there's an EOS coming right down the road yes. by Costco and Shoujo. Yes. Yeah. So it right there right built. there by um, uh, Max, Max Muscle. Muscle. Yes. By the way, everybody asking me, hey, man, hey, man, do you have any Tiger Tails hey built hey bars? Hey, guys. Stop. I, it's a I, cougar? Cougar tail. tail? Thank you. I what don't. Are we? I don't. I. I don't know Clemson? where. What's happening? But I don't know where this idea that I endorse Built Bar came from. I do not. Built Bar does not advertise. I do not endorse Built Bar. So everybody, like, hey, do you have those Cougar Tail bars? <laughs> no, but didn't uh, Max Muscle, Muscle and Sojo order some? Max Muscle in South Jordan um, has the right off of Bangor Highway, and what is that? Um, Banger and 104th. 104th. Thank you. Yeah. Banger and 104th has cougar tails. <laughs> and I will be there today to get some. Um, I'm Getting telling some you, is always enjoyable, you know. Yeah, see what he did there? Getting some. Anyways. Not that, Do you even not live? Not that he, the virgin, would know. But my point is... Um, right. Because you, you're pure as the driven snow. Yeah, I mean, I never would do anything, you know. Um, like that ever i mean no that's not um, me at all no by the um, way wait in all seriousness no that's not all, me at all in all seriousness mm, right oh, we're if, serious first of all if you go to max muscle you can get the cougar tail bar monty 15 is your promo code m-o-n-t-y monty 15 and get you 15 percent off your order hook it up right max muscle they don't advertise we just we're, we're good we friends just know people friends, and friends and of the program and, and shit and, yeah um <laughs> A week okay. from now, we will be on our way to Hawaii. Yes, on a seven sixty seven in first class. Yes, I can't Delta wait. one. Let's I go. am so excited. <sighs> so it- the layout for shows, and I well, we'll get specific dates. We're not going to be able to do a show every single day we're there, but we will have shows there, probably three each week. Yeah, something like that. Two to three each yeah, week, I think I it think is. I think it's uh, Monday, which is Labor Day, so mm-hmm. you're going to get a dose of us on, on Monday. Yeah, you better we show gotta, up. Well, I don't want any excuses. Tuesday. Oh, it's a holiday. I slept but, in. But on, on Labor Day, will we, be, will we be talking about what a great win it was for the Utes? You mm-hmm. know, because don't forget, that's the Monday after Utah, oh, Florida. Yeah. And by the way, the show is going to be happening later because we're in Hawaii in the time it's difference. It's not Hawaii. It's Hawaii. 
Hoi. Okay. Hoi. You weirdos. Y'all feel me? Anyways. Peace it's out, a Shaka, four bruh. hour time difference. <laughs> so we will not be on at 6.30 in the morning. What? No 2 a.m. shows? Come on. Or, why? The only opportunity for that to happen is if we've been up, like, partying, and it is yeah, not going to be the show you out. were expecting. So... Yeah, it's a four-hour time difference, so just know that it's going to be coming at you four hours later. By the way, that's your birthday as well, is it not? Monday is my birthday, so everyone can wish me a happy birthday on that day. But Monday, (laughs) Tuesday, and Thursday of that week, of the week of Labor Day, we'll have shows, I believe. Wednesday, Wednesday, we will not. Friday is a travel day. We're going to Maui that day. Friday is a travel day. day. Then Mm, the following week, I think, Mm -hmm. is also Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Friday. Yeah. Something like that. You yeah. know. Gabe Ledley says, shut up and dribble unless you're saying things I agree with. Then you you may proceed. Right. Gabe, Gabe are we angry? It's <laughs> final. What's wrong, Gabe? Uh, what happened? That's great. Tanner Plummer. Wow. Look. Hey. Oh, guys. Sorry. Did we wake Tanner, Tanner. Plummer up? Tanner. Oh, thanks. Tanner decided to show up today. Well, thanks for showing up. Wow. Mont, when you get back from Hawaii, I expect a ton of Karen stories from you. I don't think you're going to get them. No, Hawaii is the chill life. Yeah. Hawaii is... Uh... I try not. I am not... Why is there this perception that I, I go full Karen? Mode? Let's consult the douche uh... theater. <laughs> I am not often... I am not often caring guy. No, not often. Often enough that we have great stories for the show, though. Once a month? Yeah, once a month, once, probably. Yeah, maybe. Not a lot. A lot. I when mean, you do if, go Karen, you go full. I mean, listen. There's if, no like in between Karen for you. If DirecTV hadn't canceled your account, if you know America First Credit Union hadn't tried to screw you. Well, America First was when DirecTV my credit card expired, so that's not really DirecTV's yeah, but they fault. And just I cancel your account, right? Though, but on. I didn't freak out on them. DirecTV's, no, you did very good. Yeah, DirecTV is yeah. very easy <laughs> you to did do. Did well. <laughs> America First was a building frustration yeah, that I was ready to be. Well, but 100% it was. Karen but on America there. First was months long. Of, yes, a of a building, building we, you know, frustration of you know. issues that I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Ryan Skandura uh, wants to program the show on Labor Day. He says, uh, on Labor Day, you'll be doing, <laughs> you'll be talking about the Knicks trade that went down. Oh, damn. Well, we'll you never see. know. Donnie, you please. never know. You might get a pop-up show, too, every once in a while if something exciting happens. Yeah. Uh, William says, have fun in Hawaii, crew. I'll be watching. Appreciate that. Uh, Arlington Bears, congrats on the uh, business trip to Hawaii. Expense at all. Work the tax oh, yeah. code to Hawaii. Oh, yeah. See? See? Chris Just Karn understands America. it. We are, we, uh, this is a business trip. Yes, this is a business trip. And stuff. So when I'm rolling up on the show, uh, you know, with, you know, 10 margs deep and we're having a conversation about Donnie to the Knicks, that was a business conversation. Yeah, and, and stuff. Uh, Jax, Jackson Heaton, J A X S O N. Jax, your name is Jax. Jax says, "What island? I lived on Oahu last year. Going to <laughs> Kona, so going to Kona for a week, and then we're going to Maui as well. So, looking yep, forward yep. to that." Um, entitled male equals Ken. So now I'm a Ken. <laughs> oh, you're a Ken. Oh, got it. Hey, okay, the other thing know. I will say about while we're in Hawaii, you need to be following us on Instagram and Twitter. If you are not, you're going to miss like live shots from the ocean. You're going to miss out on some of the fun. I would say if you're not following and if you don't have alerts turned on for when uh, Monty goes live, you're going to miss it. So yes, yes, yes. make sure you're following. Uh, did you just go like full turn on your alerts? Like was yeah, that a she social said. media read? Turn, hit the notification fun, bell. If you want to be in on it, if you want to see what's happening, make yeah. sure you got, you're following on the right places and you have it turned on. Uh, Mike asked me if we have a promo code um, for Papa Murphy's. We do not. Not yet. Um, not yet. But there's nothing. There by is... the way, Mrs. Monty missed the announcement because she's a big time important employee girl. Ooh. Um, yeah. <laughs> And she's actually paying the light bill. So (laughs) I have to pay to keep the hot tub hot. Damn it. Um, Our um, newest partner on the BYU uh, Shamrock Series driveway is Papa Murphy's Pizza. Um, And they are going to provide us with pizza at the uh, big reveal on September 17th. When we choose the winner, we're going to watch um, BYU in Oregon at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh. 
and we are going to smoke Papa Murphy's Hell pizzas. Yeah. We'll have 10 Papa Murphy's pizza. Oh, my and, God. And we'll take so recommendations good. like what kind of pizza you guys want oh, us yeah. to bring. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, like, I'm going to Papa Murphy's today. Today. And uh, I guarantee you that I am going to be getting the uh, regular crust large pizza uh, with onion, mushroom, pineapple, and green onion. With barbecue sauce. With Hell barbecue yeah. sauce. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the... Are we having pizza today? Is that what oh, you're yeah, yeah, we are, dude. Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. I'm so today. excited. Yeah, yeah I'm so are. ready. Yeah. Although I will say yesterday is part of our casuals getting cut thing. Jake and I mixed up a little 93.7 turkey and some black beans. But with, the turkey was taco meat turkey. Like yes, seasoned. With, it had the it Kinder's taco seasoning. Like, that, hey, if get to bbqpitstop.com if only to order the uh, Kinder uh, taco seasoning. So good. The original so question, good. though, on yeah. the Papa Murphy's promo code, there, there is one in the works. There yeah. is one in the works. Hell um, yeah. But yeah, thanks to Papa Murphy's for supporting our event. Um, obviously, we're huge customers at Papa Murphy's. We love it. We go to the one over here at the district off of 4,000. Um, love it. Absolutely love Papa Murphy's. So we'll have uh, Papa Murphy's pizza and wings as well. Um, join us September 17th. And if you want to win that trip, just go to any of the five Utah locations for Barbecue Pit Stop. Um, and I just can't say enough, again, about our sponsors on the show. We don't have a lot, although over the next couple of weeks uh, in Hawaii, we are going to make an announcement. Maybe we'll do it next Thursday. Maybe a, a week from today, we have a huge sponsor addition to the show. Yeah. Um, and we absolutely will will make that announcement because we can't do the things we do without sponsors on the show. And what that means is... We can't do the things we do unless you spend money with the sponsors that we have on this show. And we we do not just take anybody's money. I want to make that really clear. Like the three of us talk about this all the time. Uh -huh. Because if you're new to the show, you probably don't know. Um, like we are independent. We are not owned by anybody. You you want to see the owners? It's us too and that Jamoke over there in the corner. Um, <laughs> that Jamoke. Like, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, is it okay to call people a Jamoke anymore? I don't know if it is. I don't even know what the, it's, it's. Please don't tell me that that's like some terrible racist term, like that I just am unaware of. Um, God, is that, it that beautiful princess being over there in the corner, Mrs. I like Monty? That one. That's Thank better you. than Jamog. Uh, but we own the show. Like we own our. We have an LLC. Like we're a full-on business. We have a huge, huge announcement coming about the setup of the show. Hell like yeah. so much is going to change on the show over the next four weeks um, and into October. Like. But what we need most is you guys to... It's not. You're safe. Okay. You're good. good. What, you're what good. is a jamoke? A, a, a jamoke is defined as an ordinary, unimpressive, or inept person, typically used as a term of mild or joking disparagement for a man. Uh, if my brother and I proved one thing, it's that just about any jamoke can host a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what it says on the screen. I'm not making this up. So, on my life, so not making does, it up. So she does not qualify as a Jamoke. Um, it doesn't specify. If, it I does mean, say a man. It. I mean, it says and a man, I but got no balls. So wow. wow. Okay, so wait. You brought up never. No. 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 She has no balls. Uh, the point is, <laughs> the thing we need most is for you, you guys see. to support our sponsors because that's how we pay our bills. So yeah. whether that is barbecue pit stop, whether that is you know any of their five stores in Utah, bbqpitstop.com. Um, tell them you heard it on the Monty Show. When you go in the Max Muscle, use our promo code, uh, Monty15. Even though they don't pay us, they don't advertise on the show, support support them. Uh, they're good friends of the show at Max Muscle in South Jordan. Like Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage. If you need a mortgage, if you have questions about your mortgage, if you just want to talk to somebody and ask him how his day is going, call Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage, 801-543-9666. And, and just let them know that you heard about it on the Monty Show. We appreciate that. When you order your Papa Murphy's pizza online, put Monty's show in there. When you finish your unfinished basement, call the Wayman Brothers. Wayman Brothers Construction. Those guys are great. Speaking of huge projects that we're going to announce on this show. Yeah. Uh, Wayman Brothers Construction, 801-654-1028. Uh, but yeah, Hawaii a week from today. Um, and after that, man, oh man, we got something coming for you guys. You guys. Mm. And I'm not even, this is not me being a hype man. No, this no. is this is real. Not at all. This is real. The stuff coming is, it's going to be and, crazy. And, and we're not just talking about only new sponsors. It's it's real. Yeah. Like there's, yeah. Yep. yep. Picked That's up we can some say. wing dust at Barbecue Pit Stop. 
and I highly recommend the Giggity says. Let's go. Oh, Appreciate so that, good. Giggity. Tanner says bye. Uh, Gabe Ledley said, was super excited to hear Wayman Brothers are on board. Good dudes. Love that. Love that. Yeah. That's it. Show's over. Um, Another week down. Another week that Donovan Mitchell is still a jazz man. Just saying. Oh, oh, oh. Hit, hit the thumbs up button. Give us a subscribe. Until Monday, say goodbye, Jamoke. Goodbye, you Jamokes. <laughs>